Hello everybody and welcome to Encounter Roleplay. My name is Will, I'm a DD sex icon. This is the first time I'm doing this and I'm back today for a, uh, a new show, a new uh, little mini-series, if you were here in Encounter Roleplay, uh, called Dark Matter. And we're using the new uh, Dark Matter Kickstarter rules, which changes D&D 5th edition into dope sci-fi stuff. So uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute, but uh, the, uh, the main cool thing about it is that you don't have to use uh, learn a new rule set, you can just already use your player's handbook, and of course with the use of the Dark Matter PDF or hardcover book, which is on Kickstarter right now. Uh, links are there for you guys in the chat and in the description of the YouTube video if you want to go check it out. Uh, and you can play Dark Matter with new races, but also into any campaign uh, setting that you'd like to. And so Knowing the cast and crew that I had with me today, I would have been a fool if I did not decide to play a game in some Warhammer 40k with a little bit of uh, Dark Matter Spice. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a uh, little Rogue Trader style uh, inspired campaign tonight. So um, let's go around the cast and crew, let's figure out who we are, and of course, who we're going to be playing tonight. So uh, let's start with Pruitt. How's it going, Pruitt? Oh, it's 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 going lovely, sir. I am so excited to be getting into some sci-fi action. I've been I've been DMing a game of basically Spelljammer for so long, but I can't play, and it tears me apart. Will it tears me apart like a black You're hole? me apart. <laughs> and so uh, I, I look forward to playing uh, playing this evening. I have backed this Kickstarter, so I look forward to getting my special uh, Kickstarter edition of the Dark Matter uh, info. See, I will be playing. I was uh, just just deciding whether mm -hmm. I should go for that one as well. I'm already at twenty dollars, but now I'm like, you know, forty dollars isn't far away from twenty dollars. It's not that far. Yeah, it's really not, right? <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I went for it. And tonight I'll be playing Kelanon. Uh, it's kind of a, a character archetype I like playing. Uh, gun. Anytime I can play a gunslinger. So let's play a little uh, Clint Eastwood in space, shall we? Hell to the yeah. I like sound a lot. We also have Bastian with us tonight. Bastian, how's it going, my friend? It's uh, going great. Um, of course, I jump at every chance to go and play some 40k. Uh, I'm Vuurmannetje, just the official pronouncement for once. Uh, and I do all the, the tech background uh, on Encounter Roleplay. Uh, and anytime we get 40k, I jump and I say I want to play. I'm a real fan. Uh, I will be playing Happy, who is a uh, soldier, or was a soldier, and now he is a retired soldier turned into a combat servitor. Uh, that's about it. Dope. Love the sound of that. Uh, we also have Charlie with us tonight. Charlie, how's it going? It's going good. I, I thought today it was just going to be Warhammer hangover, but here I am, back in the grim, dark bowels of Warhammer. And uh, tonight I'm going to be playing Trinity, who is a perfectly normal human. I don't know what you're talking about when you say she glows slightly blue. Um, I am playing the ship's doctor. And I am here to take care of all of your wounds. I specialize in infectious diseases, and I am a hypochondriac. I think that's all you need to know about me. <laughs> so... <laughs> Just wow. constantly trying right, to self-diagnose. That's a whole lot of information right there. A lot to unpack. I'm sure we'll get to it in the course of the game. Uh, and of course, we have Nicholas back with us tonight. Nick, how's it going, my friend? It's better now. Uh, the day started out really crappy, but it's improved several le levels after that and uh nicholas is brutally honest answers to my generic <laughs> how are you doing <laughs> <laughs> well uh, I, can, I, also, I can respect that <laughs> uh, i think in the past where you live it's still my birthday so oh happy oh, birthday hey. happy yeah. birthday there we go happy birthday in the grimdark future of the 40,000th universe there are no birthdays <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and I will be playing Ilk Measley, uh, uh, he's sort of a mechanic, hacker, all things technological, and uh, he uh, probably have some sort of moral center somewhere. <laughs> That's encouraging. Don't need it That's <laughs> very encouraging. Give me uh, half an hour <laughs> and a scalpel and I will find it for you. <laughs> That sounds like a promise. 
Uh, so, uh, we're of course here today to play through some Dark Matter, meaning that we're using uh, D&D 5e rule set. Strongly encourage you guys to check out Dark Matter. Uh, it's really great. If you already love D&D, which I know hundreds of you guys do here, uh, go in and check it out, because if you like sci-fi as well, then it's the perfect mix. The Kickstarter looks beautiful. A bunch of us here have already backed it. Uh, and of course, they're sponsoring the show as well, so definitely go and check them out. Supporting kind of roleplay by supporting Dark Matter and, uh, and take a look. And if you're not convinced, well, then... Uh, Wait for us to play through here and uh, see if you enjoy it towards the end. Uh, but, of course, we're usually sponsored here today by Fantasy Grounds and WhalingGames.co.uk as well. Uh, you can check those guys out, the virtual tabletop choice that we're using here as well. And, of course, Whaling Games, where you can get miniatures, board games, role-playing games, up to 20% off the retail value as well. But let's, uh, let's start today's game, I think. Let's get into this darkest of matters, uh, because our party are uh, explorers. Uh, with a uh, a rogue trader, and um, our story begins with these characters having known each other for uh, for some time, uh, and uh, having been on uh, various different expeditions together, finding uh, items of power, uh, getting involved in civil wars, uh, and the like, uh, as one does when you are uh, with a, uh, a rogue trader. Uh, but today's adventure begins a little differently because uh, your rogue trader has uh, left his off-world and has left you guys uh, with the uh, the ship uh, that he uh, he owns. Now uh, I am of course going to let you guys name the ship and tell me everything all about it uh, because this old hunk of junk uh, is pretty much on its last legs. Uh, this ship, she's uh, she's seen a bit of action. You guys have been running with her for. You know, years probably at this point, she's been through battles, she's been through warp gates, and uh, as you guys find yourself in this new system, uh, she's pretty much uh, tattered and uh, and on her last legs. So Rogue Trader's gone off, you're not sure what he's up to, uh, somewhere else on another world, but he's fairly uh, capricious in that nature, leaving you guys to run things uh, while he's gone. Um, and I want to start things off by just learning what you guys look like, first of all, and what we would find you doing on the average day, somewhere in deep space, uh, aboard your ship. Let's start with, uh, because I love the sound of this, Trinity, what does, the, what does the medical bay of this vessel look like? The medical bay is a, is a cramped area with lots of excess uh, machine parts in here because people on the ship seem to think it is a drunk room. It is lit by a combination of black lights and blue lights, so there's a weird blow to it, but it means I can spot all the germs and all the stains and everything is anti-backed. Uh, so I am one happy uh, a uh, human in my little medical bay. Uh, Trinity herself spends a lot of time uh, doing research, uh, tapping away. You occasionally will see her lift a pen and scroll something, but as typical of a doctor, it's completely illegible. Uh, she hasn't quite mastered fingers. She's human. She <laughs> knows how to use fingers. So, uh, yeah, she spends mm -hmm. her days mm -hmm. uh, in her medical bay. She's fairly average looking. She's about five foot seven. She's one of those women that you swear you've seen somewhere else before, but she didn't recognize you when you first met, so maybe not. Uh, she has a really great brain for uh, species biology and... Mm. As I said, infectious diseases is really her focus. So whenever she hears those little com calls about outbreaks, she twitches and gets a little bit excited. Uh, and at the moment, she's probably busy researching and writing notes and in the quiet hum of her little medical sanctuary. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, what about, let's see, uh, what about Ilk? Ilk Measley? Uh, this infiltrator of ours, what would we find him doing on the average day? He's probably down in uh, the engine room or somewhere close to it, uh, banging around, uh, trying to fix things. Not fixing it too well because then, you know, he would have nothing to do. So he's just trying to mend it with, uh, or what's it called? Uh, not duct tape, but something else. Similarly, face tape. Oh, back uh, tape or yeah, like face that. tape. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> back tape it's and uh, vent, it's vent tape. Sorry. Yeah, vent tape. Yeah, and you know, uh, it, it's w where he usually hangs out. It's probably uh, lots of grease, dust, 
Mm. Uh, cardboard boxes just thrown in the corner. Uh, perhaps some uh, processed food in a plate left unattended for mm. a few months. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's that's a quite a quite a dark scene indeed that we find uh, <laughs> okay. In. Uh, as the, the camera passes through these uh, steel uh, corridors, we come to Kel Anon. What does uh, uh, Kel yeah. look like and uh, Kel's environment? Uh, Kel, he, uh, he has uh, worn but well-maintained gear. He's got like a nano uh, fiber weave vest uh, that he uh, wears a, a long leather duster over it. It's hell trying to keep it, uh, you know... Uh, properly cared for, proper oils and everything, so it doesn't get dried out in the vacuum of space. Um, but he's got a couple of uh, pistols on his hips, one on each side, one much larger than the other. And he always has them on him. Normally, if he's not working, because uh, he is the pilot of the ship, if he's not piloting, he's usually he's usually playing with his gun. He, he can't help it. He's, he's a boy at heart. So, uh, you know, the, the bridge of the ship uh, is like his domain, you know, and so it is... Much like his his gear, it is impeccably uh, well kept. It's clean. It's pristine. Probably hates it when Ilk comes up because he'll like leave like a food wrapper or something, uh, <laughs> right. like on the counter, and um, you know stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, that's that's usually he's found like uh, tweaking the navigation. He's very he's very dedicated to his job uh, because he he wants to stay off the radar, so to speak. Uh, he's crossed some people in the past um, at the. Uh, because of uh, his friend uh, on the ship, Happy, and he doesn't want to get—he doesn't want the Imperial Guard to catch up with him. Cool, very cool. All right, and last but not least, what about Happy? Where would we find Happy? We'll probably find Happy uh, close to uh, Kalanon, actually, uh, near the ship, uh, uh, ship's bridge, uh, on security detail. But um, he looks like uh, half a machine, half man. Um, Half of his face is covered in a in a in a metal uh, faceplate, which is like shiny metal. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. we know we all know Kel doesn't like smudged and rusted stuff. So, um, all all his body is is half covered in metal plates, and where it's not covered in plates, it's either tubing, uh, actual uh, normal clothing, um, or implants. Um, and let's see. With all the cool. metal plating, despite all the metal plating, he still looks mm -hmm. like he's alive. Um, as a normal combat surfer would would like uh, move around machinely, um, he looks like he has a will of his own, other than being a being a servitor. I mean, all the other ones they are mindless. This one, he talks back. Very cool. So as we find uh, the the team of you aboard your uh, ship, some great. Name suggestions there in chat for the ship's called. Uh, you'll hear the the sort of intercom, the uh, alarm that something's happening on the bridge. Uh, the kind of <laughs> in each of your uh, individual bays. Uh, it's not like a we're under attack kind of alarm. It's that your attention is required. Uh, and the the ship is of course clever enough to alert you of this. This is the equivalent of your uh, your iPhone's alarm going off in the morning. But uh, at this point, you're tracking that you're someday somewhere within like midday in space time. Uh, as you guys make your way towards uh, the bridge, the hollow panel shows that you have a new message, which I will share with you here. And somebody. Can read this one out. Uh, let me know when that pops up for you guys. Oh, of course, I disconnected from my own fancy grounds. Lol. All right. Uh, you guys see that uh, transmission? Yep. Yeah. Happy. Uh, happy. What's that say? Let's see if this works. Lord Captain Locke, you are hereby ordered by his Lord, uh, Lordship Admiral Matheson to immediately withdraw from Damaris and return to football for reassignment. You are forbidden from using Imperial assets, including but not limited to his Divine Majesty's ships, Aegis, and any and all embarked Imperial Navy officers' crew. 
to assist to the Damaris defense forces. Defense of Damaris had not been deemed an unnecessary risk and all support for the system is withdrawn from the foreseeable future. May the God Emperor have mercy on their souls. A few seconds later a second transmission comes through. And that should pop up to you guys here as well. New message. To all available Imperial and affiliated rogue trader vessels within range, being a loyal system to his most holy majesty, the Emperor of Man, Governor Kepek requests the aid of and secure from Imperial assets against the Xenos threat known as the Orc. The Mars is preparing yeah. to resist an impeding invasion by the wretched greenskins who are messing outside of the system. We ask for any assistance in the form of ships, supplies, manpower, arms and expertise so that we may protect one of the Emperor's worlds from the de depredation of his horde and unclean force horde. Governor Kepak in his most magnum magnanimous, uh, magnanimous but force pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this robot doesn't know. Foresight prom promises to reward any such aid with the wealth of his planet. Know that the Maris is a rich planet and will reward her allies greatly. <clears throat> so, well, uh, as as yeah, as Happy says this, you guys start going through these data sheets that pop <laughs> up and uh, and can read for this information. Well, well um, reward sounds nice, though. Yeah, <clears throat> maybe we can. Uh, maybe it'll be enough to buy uh, a new ship. And get rid of this rust bucket. Wait, where's the? Should we go ahead and leave without the captain? I guess. Wait. I mean, we shouldn't captain. leave without captain the just captain. Left. But he left. Well, is... you know what I say. You know what I say. Uh, fuck the captain. Well, I'm gonna pretend you didn't hear that. And good thing the XO <laughs> isn't up here. Um, At this point, you actually get a, a a little like a like a like a call is coming through, like call transmitting right now, uh, and you can see that it's from your uh, your rogue trader, like your captain. Oh, speak of the devil! Let's we'll see what that says. Uh, it's like a live transmission, and his uh, kind of crackly face pops up on the data sheet for a second. It's like, hey, uh, how are you guys doing? How's it going? He's like uh, somewhere in some alien bar right now. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <clears throat> gonna have to purge the conversation. Gonna have to purge the logs after we get done with this. Um, hey, Captain, uh, we just got a we just got a transmission to go go to a planet called uh, the, right. called uh, Damaris. Go yeah. with me. Sounds good. Well, you guys orcs. don't have too much fun. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Yeah, it's just to check out some orcs. There's nothing really more to say about it. Um, we'll uh, we'll let you know. Sure. Orcs, man. Look yeah, out. They said they said they would pay for travel costs. She sure. kind of looks at the people on crew and she's like, <laughs> "Yep. <clears throat> travel, man. You got to You got to do it." Yeah, yeah, we're going to do that. So, uh, but we'll be back uh, just a few days probably. You gonna be okay? You need any help? Whatever. It stumbles away from the uh, the machine. Uh, your okay. rogue trader captain is a, a known, you know, drunk and uh, rarely gets anything done. It's probably you guys who get most of the work done around here, but he takes all the credit. Yeah, he's also a bit of a xenophile, it looks like. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, um. Since right, the captain's well, not here, though, uh, I'm gonna suggest we're uh, splitting his chair, right? Well, that's why I told him it's only uh, travel expenses, so we'll we'll just pay to refill yeah. the ship. Everybody cool with that? Yeah. Okay, cool. He won't even remember talking to us, <coughs> and uh, and and Kel will then like type on there and purge the the conversation logs. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and go ahead and like. You. Do you think you should have perhaps mentioned the the first message we received? No. Uh. <laughs> Kel looks at it again. <laughs> yeah, probably. Hmm. 
So wait, we're supposed to go back to Footfall, but also help out at... Okay, that's just so, weird. So, <laughs> so for, for, for Clarity, you've, like, intercepted a... The, the first message uh, is a... Um, like a, a both of them are general broadcasts, but this one is specifically for Lord Captain Locke, who's been ordered to withdraw. So not technically you guys, you've just sort of intercepted okay. this message. The second message oh, okay. is for any rogue trader okay, so vessels the, the, around. The GTFO wasn't for us. <clears throat> right, right. So there is uh, a Captain Locke apparently in the system. Uh, the uh, world that we're talking about is Damaris, which is in the sector that you're in right now, not mm -hmm. far from where you guys are. Uh, and apparently this Lord Captain Locke has been uh, ordered to immediately withdraw. Uh, well, that's well not it good. would seem there would be a great humanitarian crisis if we did not intercede. Yeah. You know what that also means? It looks like the Imperial Guard is withdrawing from this place. So, <clears throat> you know what that means, right? Yeah, I, I like getting paid, but I don't like I, I like being alive a lot more, so I'm... Uh, well, we, what do you uh, say we go and at least check it out? And if it gets too hot, <clears throat> if, there's, if there's too much DACA going on, then we just get to the chopper and get out of there. What yeah, and we, 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 yeah, we can blame uh, that our captain never got the message because he was gone. So, I mean, Exactly. <clears throat> I think it's a plan. Yeah. I should have ready my medical supplies. I think you're going to need them there, Trinity. Happy Plotus, of course. Always wanted to say that. Plotting a course for Damaris, if I'm correct. Yep. Correct. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so a little bit of information comes in on Damaris as you guys are, are looking it up in your uh, descent towards the planet. Uh, it's uh, essentially a frozen planet, so it's going to be very, very cold on the Maris. Uh, however, it is a pleasure planet, so that means that the uber-rich uh, live on the Maris. Uh, if uh, the, the 1% of Earth are probably the 99% of the Maris, right? Like, this is, this is riches untold. Um, you're going down to this pleasure planet, which is essentially where people uh, in this... Uh, sector go for like a winter vacation to go to like skiing um so it's you know this this beautiful paradise essentially but frozen paradise um it does have uh it's it's near a mining world uh which is known as chorda's folly which i'll shoot to you guys as well we get more and more names going here uh chorda's folly um and uh, one thing that you will know is that Chorda's Folly has recently been destroyed and taken over by a massive orc warband. Uh, so the the warband took over Chorda's Folly, and it looks like Damaris is next on their on their radar. Um, however, the people of Damaris are seemingly too arrogant or unwilling to leave their treasures behind to leave so uh they called in the imperial guard by the looks of things but the guard are being pulled out because it's being seen as an unnecessary risk to them okay all right so this is what we do we go down there we just convince a few of these rich assholes to get out of there and we'll give them passage and we charge them passage and then whatever happens after we leave, happens after we leave. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And we're safe. <clears throat> and it's we're the safe. safest thing we can do. It's the safest thing we can do and still get lots of money. Yeah, I I'm I'm all on board with this. We're yeah. saving Imperial citizens, which is good. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's sure, sure, totally, yeah, sure, totally sure. good. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we want, Happy. That's, that's the kind of thinking that'll take us far. <clears throat> But we have to make sure that their money is safe too. Is the is the most important thing. So we could Trinity. possibly. What do you say? What do you say we could buy our own ship and we can leave this asshole captain behind, and we can get a bigger cut? What do you say? We start our own crew, take jobs as they come. We're under the thumb of no man. Yeah. Trinity no? pulls no. out a pad and yeah. wants to look up the schematics of the <laughs> ship to figure out how many people we can fit and how much money we can fit to the perfect ratio. Right. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you pull up the uh, the data spreadsheet uh, and you start doing some uh, some some quick space math. Uh, the uh, the <laughs> the capacity of uh, your ship being this old rusted uh, tub, you could fit like fifty people on this comfortably. Um, they wouldn't be living comfortably. Like you guys are living off these processed rations that you've you know you've picked up and are living on. But uh, you could fit fifty on this, um, depending on how much you charge them. Of course, that's that could be a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, however, like you know, there are cruises uh, in this in this world which hold tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. So your spaceship is like a, a tiny little you know goldfish, really. Looking yeah. up from my calculations, I say. We could take 45, or nah. we could steal a bigger ship and take more. I mean, commandeer. Y- yeah, uh, we, we can protect the bigger ship. But, but, but I'm thinking if, if we're staying in this ship, uh, which I do not suggest because we all know what kind of ship this is. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I, but, but, but I think we can get at least 60 people in. I mean, that there is some. That would not be comfortable some... or optimum. No, no, no I, I, we can throw some families into the machine room. I mean, there are some boxes we can just throw away. And... Yeah, well, I don't want anybody up on the bridge, though. This is this is sacred. That would increase here. the risk of it's infectious many... disease spreading. Yeah, that but is isn't that your specialty? Yeah, but that's your specialty, right? So you can keep that. That, under that, that, that's, that that's good. That's good. We can charge extra for flu shots. That is an interesting idea. Let's remember mm-hmm. to pick on rations. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If we yeah, if right. we make I them sick, we, we can sell them the cure, and then we keep <laughs> making them sick. This is just like uh-huh. real life. Okay. This is well, all right, right, yeah. to America's medical system. I can finally complete my. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to we'll say sell that. Well, some insurance out loud. as yeah. well. <laughs> is, is it like an uh, impulse uh, uh, drive away, or do we have to go through the warp? Uh, no, you won't have to warp jump to uh, to get fruitless. You're actually in oh, the system. Uh, the name of the system is the Coronus Expanse, which I will put in the underground as well. The Coronus Expanse. Um, it's uh, it has its actually something that would come up is that it has uh, uh, its own PDF, the Planetary Defense Force, and a flotilla of intersystem warships. So while the Imperial Guard are pulling out, the defenses of Damasus are actually fairly strong as well, uh, which uh. may be partly why they don't want to leave because they are they believe that they could destroy the Orcs uh, in a you know a, a space fight, uh, space battle. Yeah. But um, whether or not that's true, you don't know. You don't actually know the numbers of their fleet or those of the Orc warband. Elk. Right, right. Would you download a PDF on the PDF? That would be useful information at this point. <laughs> Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's a uh, it's a PDF within a PDF. Um, you guys have to go deeper to <laughs> to learn more. Uh, <laughs> wow. uh, at this point, Trinity is busy, like just kind of babbling about numbers and optimization and possibilities for using cargo holes to test various diseases she has brewing. And as she steps into the med bay, there's this hiss as like the anti back falls down on her, cleansing her from the contamination of being with the others. Okay. Yeah. Um, long before she got, the uh, Trinity got done calculating, like, Kel, like, punches it and heads towards, uh, heads towards Damaris. Beautiful. How long do we think so, it's going to take to get there? Uh, it, this will take till the rest of the day. Um, probably 24 hours, uh, all in all, actually. So mm-hmm. by the time you arrive, it'll be sort of like a midday-ish time on Damaris. Um, okay. So, yeah. Um, so as you uh, uh, fly closer, um, the first thing that you will uh, notice as you're coming in on this huge frozen orb is that before you actually reach uh, the ground... Uh, you, you'll come to a, a massive space station, uh, which is in uh, orbit around the planet with a smaller moon. Um, it looks like there are a, uh, a large amount of uh, vessels, and uh, this looks to be where the, uh, the fleet of Damasis uh, lies. Uh, and you'll also see uh, fleeing Imperial Navy 
vessels, uh, the ones who have been recalled. Presumably, these are from Captain Locke's uh, fleet, and they are being recalled and uh, leaving the, the planet, so flying kind of past you guys. Uh, you'll be checked on the, you know, the, the intercoms and the like to make sure that you have some kind of identification. Uh, but your rogue trader vessel is marked as uh, as one that is, you know, legal and allowed to enter orbit. Uh, in fact, because they have sent out the call for all available uh, rogue trader uh, vessels to be called in, uh, you're actually the, the the person on the intercom, the uh, the servitor on the intercom, actually sounds quite excited to hear from you guys. Uh, and gives you permission to land uh, on Damasus. You are um, expected, it would seem, as you step off the shuttle, coming close in on Damaris. Uh, you can see uh, on the way on the descent downwards uh, that there are huge palaces around here, uh, almost all over. It's a sprawling city uh, of uh, wealth, uh, flying spaceships and cars overhead. Uh, this is probably one of the nicest places you guys have uh, ever been allowed to come to with the rogue trader. Generally dealing with places that are uh, a little bit more, you know, scum and uh, villainy than uh, than this one. Uh, but as you get out of the ship, um, you step into the bright midday sun, and you can hear the ticking of metal uh, as the ship cools from its landing, and the smell of Promethean and the fumes of the ship fuel permeate the air. Uh, there's actually a man uh, coming along in a ground car. Uh, he's very well dressed in an adept's robes, uh, and he drives towards your ship um, and uh, steps out. As you make eye contact with him, uh, he makes a sign of the Aquila and greets you. Greetings, honored worthies of our Imperium. On behalf of the honorable Belkan Kapak, governor of the Imperial Allied world of Damasus, I welcome you to our home. My name is Joran Alexander, aide to Governor Kapak. I have been sent here at his request to transport you and your esteemed entourage to the Imperial Governor's Palace. I am also to place myself at your disposal as a liaison for the duration of your stay. <clears throat> you a very eloquent towards you. And uh, kind of extends a hand of friendship. Uh, yeah, so I'll... I'll uh... Go ahead. Thank you, I am happy... I'm happy to see you as well. Oh, no, I, that's, you know what, never mind. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> name's Kel. Uh, so, yeah, let's, what's, what's the plan here, old, uh, is your name Joran? Yeah, Joran. We're gonna, we're gonna go yes. talk to the governor? When's the evacuation? The evacuation. Oh, very, very good. Uh, no, um, there's no evacuation taking place, so you may have seen some of the Imperial fleet of uh, Captain Locke's uh, uh, ships leaving. It's merely just a, a routine fly-around of the uh, the planet which is taking place right now. It's uh, The governor's very excited to have you. Please step into this car and I'll take you there. Okay. Sure. And, uh, so we're going to get in the car, uh, but uh, can I uh, kind of click on our little Vox channel, like a personal Vox mm -hmm. channel, and just and just kind of start kind of start mumbling like they don't they don't know that they're leaving. They they they, they really think that they're coming back. Oh shit! Um. <clears throat> well, can I insight this dude to Absolutely. see if he's all cray cray? Absolutely. Roll me a uh, okay. roll me an insight check here. That's an eighteen. Man, you know what's really nice when we play when I do all these different uh, games to just know what you guys are rolling, like what skills you can roll. <laughs> that's, that's one of the things I really yeah. like about Dark Matter. Um, it's like, do I have to roll like a fast talk? Yeah, uh, and eighteen is great. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Joran Alexander uh, is lying. Um, he uh, quite quite obviously when you when you look at him uh, and sort of try and read into him a little bit. Um, yeah, he knows that the Imperial Guard are leaving, but he's putting up some kind of front, perhaps, to make the governor look good um, about about that. Yeah. Hell, he is lying. Oh, yeah? <clears throat> well, 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 of course it is. I mean, he's a rich, pompous asshole, of course, and a politician. Like... Yeah, yeah. What else was he going to do? Yeah, these uh Pompous is these a interesting famous. condition. Yes, yes. It's lethal. 
So, and I, I'm just gonna, I, I'm just gonna kind of lean forward uh, over the seat up to the front where Joran is either driving or up in the front or whatever. Right. <clears throat> so, so, so Joran, before we get to the governor, before you know, you have to keep doing this thing that you're doing. What's the real plan? The, the real plan. Um, that's why I. And he kind of looks at you for a minute and realizes that you can be, you know, straight. Well, mm-hmm. uh, I, I, I'm not sure what the real plan is. In all honesty, yeah. I was hoping that you might have a plan. Because, um, well, right now things aren't, uh, aren't looking so good. No, you got, you got, a, you got an orc uh, warband on your doorstep. Uh, and the Imperial uh, Guard has already... Uh, they're vamoosed. You're on your own out here. Well, well, there, there are, there is a, uh, a few forces that we have here under Marsis. So I'm, I'm sure that we can withstand them with your aid. I hope that we can. Wow. With the four of us. Did you not bring your own vessel? Is it? I thought that. And he kind of looks at the ship we've landed on. Thought it was just the 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 the, the escape pod or something. Oh no, that's it. That's the that's our ship. Yeah. Oh. Well, did uh, told, yeah, I, 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 did I tell you we'd bring an army? Well, rogue traders, I've, I, well, <laughs> I was hoping, you know. We are uh, the most capable rogue traders, you, know. you will find. Well, we uh, really need you to lend us a ship, and we will complete what needs to be done. Uh, a uh, ship? Uh, well, that's something I can, of course. Uh, me and my family have uh, a few vessels that I think you might have a uh, better time with than that. And he kind of really looks at you uh, all, reassessing exactly how skilled you might be. Uh, and it's like, you know, there has been a council has been uh, has been called after we heard of your arrival. Proper arrangements have been made for accommodation in Damascus City as well. Uh, until the matter at hand has been resolved. As for the ships, that's something we can talk about uh, after the council meeting. Okay. Well, I guess we should probably have this council meeting then. Quite, quite. And I'm, I'm, I know that the uh, the governor has asked to meet with you after the uh, council has adjourned as well. So, uh, yes. If you have any questions, and you, you know, you're driving along the way, uh, the governor has informed me to uh, to, to to inform you. Uh, he doesn't like questions or answering them himself, so I tend to do that for him. Ah, yeah. He's got the uh, burdens of uh, of being governor on his mind. Yeah. Oh, they are so, many. They are many. So, yes. I, I'm sure. So, uh, the so emperor I... guides his hand. Truly, he is most fortuitous and, uh, and circumspect in his uh, rulings. So I assume the governor wants to be on the first ship out here. Out of here, right? No, oh, the governor won't leave. No, no, no. What did I catch your name? Uh, Ilk. Ilk. Uh, no, no. The governor uh, is staunch in his dedication, steadfast in his uh, in his loyalty towards Damascus and its population. He will die before he leaves this place. Oh, my little, yeah. <laughs> you my little. You said like effect. On my little box in Ilk's ear, he hears, Are these symptoms of being a pompous arsehole? Yeah. Suicidal tendencies noted. His arsehole is pompous. Uh, People think once they get a certain amount of money, that equates to power, and power equates to invulnerability. So it's they don't understand that, you know, that orcs don't care about money. Yeah. Our captain has similar symptoms. I shall have to inspect him when we... Well, mm-hmm. uh, most of his symptoms is because, you know, he's a bit of a drunk. <clears throat> but his it, alcoholism uh... is a risk factor. I think it's the towel he hangs out with. Interesting. <laughs> All this time, uh, <laughs> Joran's like talking away about the business that his family runs on the planet. Uh, he's, you know, chatting to you guys. Uh, you, you learn a little bit about him, that uh, his family actually used to own the now-dead planet of Chorda's uh, Folly, 
uh, or now orc-held planet of Jordan's Folly. So he's probably super, super rich um, if that is just one of his family's investments. Uh, the Alexander mm -hmm. family, uh, it seems like, at least according to Joran, that uh, are very wealthy and very influential within Damasus as well. Um, their can investments I... tend to be in like mining colonies and that kind of thing. Can I get on the space Google and be looking at this guy as well? Yeah, yeah, Spoogle is definitely a thing. Uh, you can run me a history. You can run me a history check. <laughs> I would very much like to do that. Uh, Thirty twenty. Damn. Yeah, um, the Alexander family are indeed very wealthy. They own no less than ten planets. Um, so, you know, that's like ten Earths. So yeah. having all of the income of all of these planets, you know, they're like stinking rich. Like, there's no way that you could ever spend all those credits in in your lifetime. Uh, Joran is the second son, uh, and so like in a long time he may come to like own the fortune himself, but uh, nonetheless he must be fairly rich. Uh, if you want to look up Belkan Kapak, the uh, the governor, he's generally considered a very um, slow to act kind of figure. Um, Damasus itself is uh, so kind of rich, wealthy, and powerful that. He doesn't do anything to upset the population because they're all just uber elites, right? Uh, so pretty much anything that happens, it'll take Capac like 10 years to make any kind of changes. And certainly nothing that would like help any kind of poorer population, of which there's barely any on the planet. So I'll combine, uh, like compile this information, a couple of key articles and kind of a summary, and I'll pass my data pad to Cal so that he can read over it. Yeah. As yeah, our I'll, current I'll... captain on this mission. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, I'll scan that and um, sit in the back. So if uh, the governor is not going to be uh, uh, excommunicating himself from the planet, uh, uh, are we going to assume that you, uh, you Yorin, are going to stay as well? Oh yes, yes, I intend to stay by the governor's side until. Well, whatever end. Uh, but I... You may not know this. And he gives you a very sort of... Um, talking down type tone. Uh, and it's like, but we have our own planetary defense force here. And not only that, but we also have our own navy as well. Uh, two separate entities, but both incredibly powerful. General Dante leads the planetary defense force. And... Uh, as I name check my own NPCs here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, he says, Lady Elizabeth Orleans runs the uh, the Navy. Both excellent commanders. Maybe I don't get along so well, but... Uh, that's neither Anything here nor there. Anything else to defend Jordan's folly? Oh, no. <laughs> you know, when the, uh, the Orc war band came into... Uh, the full force there, uh, my family decided that it was best to uh, withdraw our investments from that colony and, uh, well, that was for the best. Uh, when Trini is looking this up, um, essentially what happened at Chorda's Folly is uh, the Alexander family said, lol, nope, we're getting out of here, and they <laughs> left everyone else to die. Uh, so the, all of the the miners and mm -hmm. you know uh, millions uh, who are who were on that planet were left to die to the orc invasion. So well, um, they got away. Yeah. So so Joran, what's the what would you yes. say is the the population here? Why don't I look that up? I it's uh, <laughs> on my little data pad. I think it's on page twelve on my PDF. <laughs> Uh, the capital city itself uh, has a population of 250 million. The, ci uh, the city itself is like most of the planet, right? Um, yeah. It's quite a lot of people, wouldn't you say? Just in one city? Well, it's, it's smaller for uh, than, than others, you know? It's really just a... A refined group of people who find themselves on Damasus. Uh, really, it is. Uh, we often see people like myself. It's less often that we see uh, 
people like us. Yes, yes, people like yourselves yeah. uh, here on uh, Damascus. So I have to say, it's a very refreshing change. Yeah, yeah. Mingling with the more uncouth. Quite, that, that'd be quite. Well, like, yes. uh, fiddle with his, uh, his battle gauntlets a bit, uh, like uh, mechanics whizzing about and saying, um, so why are we here? Well, with the Imperial Navy and uh, the, the Lord Captain uh, Sylvia Locke leaving, uh, we've, we're not fools. Uh, we've learned that uh, with the, uh, the Imperial uh, Navy here, we are going to have to rely on our own. And we're a very resourceful group of people here on the Marsis. We're not just going to let uh, General Dante and uh, uh, Lady Orleans deal with this. We thought it would be best to... Uh, Ground around a little. Hire some mercenaries. Find less yeah. scrupy. Well, maybe. <laughs> we are your best choice. Yeah, I mean, the price is going to have to be really good. I mean, like, really good. I mean, how many billions are we talking here? <laughs> how many bees? 12B? I'll yeah, have yeah. to confer with my illustrious colleagues before I uh, come back to you with a... <clears throat> Hang on just a second. Did he just say billions? Like as in B, billions? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I, got, we, uh... I, just felt, I just started feeling a lot more heroic. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> bill billions are good. Yeah, started to care yeah. so much for these people. Yeah, but if you are, I don't know what it is. But, a... but, but as my dad used to say, if you're dead, you can't spell billions. Well, that's why we do a ha half before and half yeah. after. Yeah. And if, if, just... if things start going sideways, we bug out and we still have the half from before. And it's still a few millions, billions. So, yeah. And this would just be from his personal wealth. If we take 60 of these rich, pompous, Asshole suffering people. That would yeah, be a multitude Trinity. of riches from which we could pull. We're like talking aloud now, right? <laughs> we're, we're mumbling in the back. <laughs> yeah, but Trinity, uh, I, Trinity, Trinity seems um, fairly distracted. They're like racing winds. You're in this frozen scape. So it's actually kind of loud, like ambience, I guess, from the wind and stuff. You're on comms in order to, on the Vox comedy in order to speak to one another. Yeah, I mean, uh, Trinity, you should, you should know that you know, humans don't really. Don't really like to be called uh, names, especially when they're paying. No matter how we feel about them, we keep those those those. I'm a human. Um, totally... I do not wish to be called names. Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> kind of glances over at Ilk <laughs> and happy. Yeah. And then back uh, to Trinity. We are all humans here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> anyway, uh, like my daddy always said, don't insult the money until like after you've spent it. <clears throat> Noted. All right. All right, and so you draw up to the palace after a uh, uh, some of this uh, conversation goes uh, back and forth. And you arrive at the most luxurious palace you could have ever hoped to uh, to come to. It is uh, like an ice palace, so it is quite literally frozen and remains frozen by these servitors who go around and like blast chill huge sections of the ice so that it doesn't melt away. Uh, and uh, inside, it's actually strangely warm, uh, and that's because there are other servitors around who are blasting huge flamethrowers uh, around, like also melts the place. But then you've got these kind of like hot and cold, and it actually gets quite warm in these corridors overall. Um, and you walk past um, various different uh, elites uh, who are going around the governor's palace. Joran shows you through, um, briefly introduces you to a few other nobles on the way in, uh, and lets you through to these uh, frozen doors into the council chambers. When you come in, it's quite clear that the group of people here are already uh, in session. The council has already begun. 
Uh, you're in a um, uh, huge circular room uh, around a uh, kind of like a, a hollow com like pad, I guess. Uh, and around that, there are five or six people who appear to be deep in conversation with one another. Uh, Doran looks embarrassed and blushes. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I was told that the council was going to uh, take place as once once you were here, not 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 before. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like they started without us. Uh, uh, We feel really welcome. That's fine. I apologize for this insult. It seems the council must have decided to convene without your presence. Please excuse me. This is such a terrible breach of protocol. Um, Oh, yeah, sure, sure. As you to your map, your people. Yeah. uh, (laughs) When you uh, uh, come in, you can see that there's an older man that Joran goes to uh, stand by who's wearing the official robes of an office of an imperial governor. Uh, and Joran, uh, kind of like, <clears throat> Honored nobles of the Imperium, I present to you our planetary ruler, Lord Governor Belkin Kapak. Um, as if he hadn't already been in conversation with everyone, as if the council was just starting right now, uh, as you guys, uh, enter in, and he presents you all as well. These are our rogue trader companions who are joining us, uh, <clears throat> just in time. As you look around the room, you can see the large table which everyone's sitting, the hololith display, uh, shows uh, what appears to be the planet and ships orbiting it. Uh, There's quite an eclectic mixture of people uh, around the table in all manner of uh, planetary dignitaries to military officers. And you even notice uh, another rogue trader uh, around. You may even recognize this, uh, this person. Um, as uh, just by reputation, and I gotta find my own NPC's name here because it's a fantastic one. Oh, there it is. Uh, this is Jeremiah Blitz. Jeremiah Blitz is uh, known as one of the more bam- bombastic members of the uh, the Rogue Traders. All right, it's in. Uh... As you're going to it, Jeremiah Blitz. Uh, he's a bold guy who's always got like two bolters strapped to him at any given time. Uh, and has uh, one good eye, uh, the other has been replaced by like a servo eye, uh, like a cybernetic one. Uh, he's known for blowing shit up and uh, and sort of taking no names. Um, and you can recognize uh, another figure as Lord Captain Sylvia Locke of the Navy. Um, she actually ap- appears to still be on planet, despite her ships being leaving. Uh, she's uh, immediately recognizable due to her Imperial Navy uh, outfit and you know, insignias, badges, that kind of thing. Um, and you'll also recognize one uh, General uh, Dante, uh, who leads the PDF uh, forces here. And last but not least, there is Lady uh, Orleans, who runs the uh, local like planetary navy. And... Um, Finally, uh, there is General Kapak, uh, sorry, Governor Kapak, who is uh, the planetary ruler. Kapak himself is uh, very, very fat. Uh, while he's standing, he is actually supported by several um, servitors uh, who are like propping him up uh, as his like huge weight and jowls uh, are, are, you know, preventing him from standing without assistance. Uh, he wears the governor's robes and insignias and is covered in all sorts of bling and wealth on his uh, uh, fingers and looks every bit the, the ruler that you might have expected him. Uh, as um, uh, Joran introduces you, uh, he kind of uh, sweats and says, ah, you should introduce yourselves to everyone. Oh, right, right. You're, you're right. <clears throat> um, I am um, He's happy. Um, I'm Kelanon, pilot of the uh, of uh, our rogue trading vessel. <clears throat> I'll motion to our other colleagues. Uh, I'm Ilk. Or, uh, you know, Mr. Measley, if you prefer. That is more proper. They, they have manners. They kind of nod their heads. Do you guys introduce yourselves? I'm Dr. Trinity Hart. 
And she's staring at the sweat on um, Joran's brow, just like trying to figure out if it's because he's sick or if he's stressed. She's very <laughs> curious. You would you would expect that it's because he's stressed and uh, embarrassed by this. Um, but you never do. You can know never be too humans. careful, you know. You it's, can it's, never be yeah, too careful. This is They're true. Little cesspools of gems. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> uh, and um, the governor kind of like clears his huge dowly throat. <laughs> now, everyone, welcome, traders. Uh, and you can see that Jeremiah Blitz is giving you all, like, the crazy eye is looking at you guys, the Serbiter eye is looking at you while his other eye is looking at the, the, the governor. Um, now we're here because we need to come to some kind of plan or arrangement. As I've told you before, and I'll tell you again, there is no way that the people of Damasus nor I will ever leave this planet. This, I have, I have zero Tolerance on ever leaving Damasus. There is too much at stake here. Too many blessings of the God Emperor have been upon this planet for us just to abandon it. And I think it is uh, tantamount to, uh, dare I say it, heresy to leave this place. And Doran is next to him nodding. Like, yes, yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, and... Uh, Captain Locke, the uh, she's wearing this full like naval uh, regalia and she's got pistols all over her and a pretty dope-looking tricorn hat. Uh, she um, she says, and as I've told you before, Governor Capet, there is no way the Imperial Navy is going to be involved in a fight like this. You may be allied with the uh, Imperium, but there is uh, nothing here which legally means we need to stay here. And the given the forces of the orcs having taken another planet, my orders are to leave. My ships are already leaving orbit as we speak, and they will not be rejoining you. Uh, you can sense that both General Dante of the PDF and the planetary navy of Lady Orleans, they both seem to be, in fact, everyone in the room seems to dislike Captain Locke. I don't like what she's saying uh, whatsoever. And uh, yeah, the general size again. Sense. Right, yeah, the general size again is like, hmm. Perhaps our new friends can shed some light on this situation for the good captain. After all, there is a lot at stake. And you see Joran just go like, Uh, yeah, there is a lot at stake. Um, do you have any estimates on the on the orc horde that is bearing down on you? Have you have you already run? Obviously, you've run your 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 war games, your simulations. Now oh, she, uh, uh, Lady uh, Captain Locke nods and says, according to the intelligence received from both the Aegis and for our own sources. We have ascertained that the Greenskins are not only pre prepared to move on to our system next, but they are led by a brute who calls himself Warlord Snock Grits. Beyond that, his <laughs> forces are substantial. The Warlord commands a horde of orcs. There is no way that our forces here, what we have given, are going to make it out without heavy casualties. And the governor heavy. kind of harumps at that, and is like, heavy casualties? Well, there must always, must there not be sacrifice in the defense of what is holy for the emperor? Hmm? Must we not lose that which we love in order to defend our homes and our borders? These are common people here. Normal, average folk, hard-working people who deserve to be defended by via the taxes that we pay to your Imperium. What what good is the, um, uh, the Imperium of Man if they are not to defend us? And uh, you can sense that General Dante and uh, uh, Lady uh, Orleans of the Navy and the PDF kind of wince at this because they know that this isn't the angle to come at Lady Locke, right? This is... <laughs> they're kind of like, oh, man, what's, what's he doing? <laughs> what's he talking about? But Joran's nodding. 
Yes, yes. yes. Mm. And Captain Locke shakes her head and looks back towards the group of you and says, Surely you can see where I'm coming from here. And as there is some kind of viable solution which guarantees that the Imperial Navy in this sector will not take substantial casualties and lose great assets which were used to defend other worlds as well, she looks pointedly at General Capac. Then there's no reason for us to be able to stay here. Okay, so it's but it seems like if we come up with a good enough battle plan that you'd be willing. Because like you said, it would just be heavy losses, but you could defend this place, yes? It is within my mandate that if I see it if I see a plan which is sufficient to my liking, that I may stay here and defend the planet for a time. I will remain on planet for another day and give you all time to come up with something. If I like it, and I'll see about staying. If I don't, then I will be leaving. Trinity I bid is you gonna... gentlemen good day. And blocks out of here. She's, she's pissed. Trinity is going to advance on uh, General Capac. He's the one that doesn't want to leave, right? I'm, I'm not giving names. The governor? He's the, the governor, governor right? Capac is the one, yeah. Sorry for throwing a lot of NPCs at you straight away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Trinity will move up, and she has this concerned look on her face, and she says, You must be well to defend your planet. Have you seen your doctor lately? I have the finest physicians. Ah, uh, possible, doctor. Yes, but, uh, your kid are always welcome here. Did you know that we have our own private health facilities here on Damasus? Perhaps you would like a tour of them in more comfortable times. I would very much, but I have concerns about the stress. It is taking its toll on you. And what she's doing is she's going to try and angle to persuade him to move away with her so that her her crew can talk with the sensible people. That's sure. Just, that's uh, her angle. With- yeah, with Locke actually leaving, it seems like Dante and uh, Orleans go off together. Uh, PDF and Navy planetary forces are, are heading off. And Jeremiah Blitz himself is also uh, strolling away. He shoots you all a grin, uh, flicks round a pistol on his finger, and uh, heads into uh, another chamber. So the group kind of splits away. Yeah. I text okay. message Cal. Go after the sensible people. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm gonna go up to to Jeremiah Blitz first. Uh, at least uh, get on, talk to somebody uh, on you know even ground, socially. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, you you can head up to him. Um, where else is everyone else going? Uh, I'll stay I'm... with the governor. I'm thinking about uh, using my hacking rig to try and see if I can find some uh, uh, estimates to what kind of ship and uh, stuff that uh, Jeremiah have. Okay. Cool. So Um, should I roll? Yeah, yeah, roll me like a... It's uh, data, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're trying to hack, we can roll that, yeah. I'm just gonna steal uh, Shadow uh, Cal. Okay. Well, it's a 16. Um, yeah, Jeremiah Blitz doesn't have many, like, firewalls up, right, on his, like, personal information or, uh, his, uh, uh ship. Uh, he has one, uh, fairly large, like, space cruiser. Uh, he is known to be uh, heavy on firepower, so his cruiser itself is a, essentially a small destroyer. Um, and uh, this thing, while being very old, it's just got like straps to it, all sorts of weaponry. Uh, this thing could probably give like a small planet a run for its money if it really tried. Um, it would be overwhelmed by like a huge invasion force, uh, but nonetheless, on its own, it is a bit of a titan. Okay. Uh, so yeah, All you right. head after him, uh, Kel, and uh, he'll kind of like stop and turn around to you. Uh, hey, how's oh, it going? Uh, 
Uh, doing well, Captain Blitz. It's uh, fancy meeting yeah. you here. Hell yeah! Good so, to see uh, you, what too. Do you, what do you, uh, what do you think about this whole situation? Oh, you think oh shit, it's crazy, man. Crazy good, though, huh? Well, it's some crazy good crazy pay if we can crazy survive. Does, as I like to say. Yeah, so... I had a bit of a, a nugget of an idea forming about defending this place. Yeah. Shit. What you got? What if a ship, a big enough ship, powerful enough, with enough guns, yeah. first headed headed out to uh, to to uh, Chorter's Folly? Is that mm, right? Chorter's yeah. Folly. And just did a hit and run on the planet, trying to draw some fucking of the orc forces away. Fucking run, yeah. Right. So we split right. off some of the forces there. They chase you. You give them a run. You got run them. They're just orcs, right? Fucking orcs. Just blow the red yeah. paint off their. Just blow the red paint off of their hull, and they'll slow down, right? Right. But that at least will get some of the forces away. Yeah. And that's yeah. About as like far as I've gotten with do. my plan. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one, man. But you know this? I heard a little bit around here. You know, I used to have a buddy in the Inquisition. Fucking crazy guy. You wouldn't even believe. Real fucking nut job. <laughs> good thing us straight of minds have got it screwed on properly, you know, because we could see things like it really is, man. We could see the real shit going on. You know what I'm saying? We can fucking transcend reality, see past the walls of creation that we put up for ourselves, these own fucking constructs that we've created, and just fucking see shit for how shit is. You know what I'm saying? But I... Beyond uh, the veil, yeah. Yeah, wait. No. Listen... Listen, I heard there was some shady shit going on, on this planet. So my buddy in the Inquisition, he sent me here. And if I find any shady shit like chaos shit. What? What? I'm sorry. We got to report back, you know. So, so lean, in, lean in real close, real close, even closer, super close. Oh, yeah, that's 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 it. That's good. OK, yep. so. Yep. How do you think a bunch of orcs know how to attack a planet right when it's at its weakest and take out the mining colony? First of all, they came out of nowhere and now they come in here just as the Navy's leaving. I mean, that's pretty fucking crazy, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little, that's a little bit too much thought into things that orcs, they're, they're, they're dumb, right? I mean, I've only dealt with them dumb. a couple times, right? No, 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 come back in, come back in. There you go. Yep. Oh, don't go. Okay. So what if there's someone on the planet or some people on the fucking planet who's organizing them for some reason, you know? So that's what I'm going to be looking into. That's an interesting theory you've got there. Yeah. But I like it. It's got legs. I like it as well. And yep. a leg man. Mm. Okay, um, go. So what go help do you now. need? Yeah. Too close. You need some help with that? Yeah, personal nah, space. Nah, you just, you just tell me what you find. You know, I'll be around. Do my own investigations. But uh, if you guys turn up anything that seems odd, I got my eye on that governor myself. And you know, uh, Lady Orleans, a bit of a firecracker, that one. But she's, uh, I don't know, doesn't seem too ready to defend the planet with her life. You know what I mean? All about jumping ship. Yeah, I can't imagine why. <clears throat> right? All right, kid. It's been well, real. It's, it's also been fun. And it's been real fun also. Um, but we'll get back to you, I promise. All right, then. <laughs> and then I'm going to move over to... Leaves. Yeah, I'm going to move over to Ill. Hey, uh, is there anything you could maybe find out about... Um, Communications off planet, maybe to uh, maybe to uh, the old moon over there of Tortus Folly. Uh, I, I can I'd try. Maybe, uh, I'd maybe start with Joran. I mean, his family owned the place, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I need uh, to go uh, 
find some kind of a better computer to hook myself up into, but... You definitely would, right? So, like, to, to get anything that might be somewhat restricted, you'd have to go to uh, some kind of central, like, data hub. They've got plenty of communication towers around here. There's certainly a central one, which isn't far from the governor's palace. The only problem being uh, that they are restricted, and so you'd need a good reason to be in there. And even then, you'd be monitored by the servitors. Uh, and probably some tech priests as well. So, uh, but it's definitely doable. So yeah, the problem is getting in to the... Yeah. Well, maybe we could talk to Jorn and uh, give him a convincing reason that we need to... Like, maybe patch into their system to call in reinforcements or some bullshit like that. I can, I can try to sell one. We can, can try to sell to do a technical, technical anal- analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm going to go. Uh, Jorn's still there, yes? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go up to Jorn. Okay. Like, hey, uh, Mr. Alexander. Um, is there any way we could maybe yes. get access to one of the data hubs? Uh, my guy, he needs to run some analysis on things. He maybe needs to call the ship and call in reinforcements. I mean, you know, it's going right. to, it's all technical jargon. It makes my head hurt. Clearly. You know what I mean? Honestly, <laughs> I don't worry about such things. I just, I'll have to run that past the governor. And he's actually in the same kind of central room, but it's huge. So, so come with me and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll speak with uh, Governor Capac. Uh, so meanwhile, Trinity's been sort of one on one with the governor. Uh, trying to figure out if there's anything wrong with him. He's like morbidly obese, so that's definitely a problem. Uh, but the, the governor kind of brushes off your attentions and is like, so tell me now, Trinity, uh, Dr. Trinity, will you be able to help us here? I believe we will. I would be what very makes curious you say to look- that? Hmm? We are the finest crew in, certainly in the quadrant, if not further. Mm. We have a mix of expertise, all of which contribute to our abilities to help you here. Plus, we are willing. I see. Mm. I see that um, you have blessings. a few who have been unwilling. Is most ungracious of them. Indeed, it is. Indeed, it is. Yes. Well, blessings of the God Emperor must truly be upon us. I can't tell you how grateful we are for your assistance. I can, however, as the rest of the team uh, join back, show you some of our gratitude. And the servitors start wheeling him along, uh, almost like he's in some kind of mechanized wheelchair, uh, and they hand him essentially uh, like a huge cigar, which he starts smoking from. It's really noxious, and heavy clouds come out as you guys sort of follow along. Joran joins back on as well. Uh, And uh, he, uh, Joran actually jumps forwards with a, a data pad, um, which contains an agreement that in return for your efforts in defending Damaris, uh, you will receive a sizable sum, either in raw materials, valuable items, or in favorable trade agreements and other benefits, or whatever, you know, breakdown of that you guys would uh, like. It is to the effect of uh, the tens of billions, uh, however, the contract is fairly um, strict uh, and and clear on you guys doing the job before you get paid. They're not doing a 50-50. And the governor kind of waves it off as, sign that there, and uh, I think you'll be pleased with the amount. Uh yeah, look, can we uh, kind of just read over the contract? I mean, I, I got into this one thing with a cable company and it took years to get out of. You know how it is. So I just want to make we sure we know go through you it. you must. Let me appraise you of the situation. I'll admit that it does appear grim. Our best estimate puts your core at least 10 days away from the planet's edge. We've made very little headway towards preparing our world's defense. We have only the Bulwark, uh, which here refers to the uh, space station, which is just above the planet, and a handful of intersystem ships to defend us from their onslaught. You've seen. Few of the others who I've called upon to aid us are willing to cooperate with one another. They're bickering like mongrels fighting over scraps, all the while the beast gathers at our door. 
I grow tired of this. More than that, I grow angry. Mm. I have no stomach for such games at a time when my people need action. You know, uh, we need a plan. Some people with some vision. Hmm? To convince this stubborn woman, Captain Locke of the Imperial Navy, that she ought to do her damn job. Yeah, I, I, comp I completely agree with you, Governor. You're, of course, right. You pay taxes like every other world. You should... Uh, more, uh, more than most, you know. I'm We're sure in the highest much. bucket. I'm sure you are. I'm, I'm sure that your capital gains tax is, is up to snuff as well. Um, so, how expensive is that space station that you have? The Bulwark? I yeah. have no idea. A lot. Could it be replaced? Uh, yes, if needs be, but it will take time. Not We don't have enough time in ten days to build a new Bulwark. I'm good. No, no, not that good. Just, uh, I'm just formulating plans. Just coming up with the second part of the plan. I see. As I told just, you, Governor, hmm. we are the finest hmm. for the job. He, uh, he looks at Trinity. You're a woman. Maybe you could convince that damnable Locke to do her damn job. Hmm? What do you say? Often women, they. They understand other women. They don't understand the plans of men. Uh, sometimes we have such vast plans that I think she can't quite get her head around it. Hmm? I shall do what I can to beseech her on your behalf. Yes, yes. Good, As good. As a woman. That... As a human woman. Yes. Quite. Well said, well said. Hmm. That is well. And you know, while you're at it, you should speak with General Dante and Lady Orleans. They've both been rather damnable as well, advising me that I should leave my own planet. <laughs> as if I would be foolish enough to do something like that. No, everyone needs to be whipped up into shape, I think, because uh, quite honestly, it's not good enough. So if you can do that, then we'll pay you whatever it is you want. All right? Corporal punishment has proven most ineffectual. With the exception of commissars, of course. They are most effectual. Honestly, I don't care what it is you do. I give you free reign to do what it is you want while on my planet. With whomever you want. As long as they're not friends of mine, or family of mine, or business connections of mine. Would you like to provide me with a list so that I may note their names? No. But Joran will. I shall speak with Joran. Thank you, Governor. It's like s sweating, like putting together a data sheet right now. It's like a very <laughs> short list of people that aren't somehow connected to the Governor. Uh, but he's he's going for it uh, diligently, and he he kind of hands it to you. Uh, One more thing, Governor. Would you please authorize yes. my access to your medical banks? Why? Their data may be very useful in managing the health of your people, should we need to formulate a plan that affects such things. Now, I know you're a doctor, but are you a real doctor? This one here, and he points to Happy, he looks like he might be a real one. Someone who could deal with data. I don't want you to get all confused with data sheets. Focus on dealing with the woman. I think that will be more effectual for you, yes. Uh, uh, sure. Yep. Governor, uh, I'll, I'm certain this is no uh, fault of yours, but uh, looks can be a little bit deceiving. Uh, I don't think you would want Happy to be uh, assisting you medically. All I'm saying looks. is there are some jobs that are men's jobs and some that are women's jobs. And that's how we do things here on Damasis. And it's worked pretty well so far for us, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, uh, Governor, and he kind of puts out a hand to, to placate <laughs> Trinity before her protests come out that he can sense. Yeah, well, as you can see, um, 
uh, Happy here uh, has been able to formulate a program that puts all the spreadsheets in order to keep it nice and easy for our good doctor to uh, maintain her concentration on her job. So mm. we've uh, we've worked out these pro at least some of these problems. Maybe we could share. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I know how it is, mm. and I and Kel kind of looks at at Trinity again, like, please, just <laughs> please. Uh, but yeah, I mean, That's if we true. get that access to the uh, medical files, we could we could help out a lot of people here. Very Trinity well. is gonna reach under her like her little space outfit. I'm not sure what she's wearing. I'm not sure if we're you know original series or some other series. But uh, she pulls out her little sun god emblem and like tags it right on in case anyone wants to miss the emperor is uh, represented here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, he uh, he nods. Good, good, good. Well, as long as you understand, then you do that, Joran. And Joran's like adds it to his list of things that he has to do of giving you guys access to the you know the medical facility. Uh, on top and, of uh, that data yeah. hub, yeah, the data hub. He, he did oh, say yes, we yes. got access to could, whatever. Could you, we need. could you explain that again? The the thing about the the data hub, um, the data cable wire. Let the mechanic uh, nonsense, Mister Measley. Yeah, uh, what, what can we do with that? I pull out well, we can we can put. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we can uh, use uh, whatever uh, we can pull from the communication relay, and uh, make sure that we can coordinate attacks with all ships according to whatever plan we figure out. We can also uh, use it to uh, I like it. Uh, uh, have some sort of a trip wire for the orcs, so that we know that when they're coming, uh, we can... Uh, That's damn good. And you know what? It's men like you who should be the admirals of the Imperial Navy, not Captain Locke, because she never even once thought about a trip wire for the orcs. And you know what? She's leader of that whole damn navy. Wouldn't surprise me if we put someone better in charge, they might be able to do their damnable job somewhat better. Hmm? Uh, yes, yes. I like this. I like all of this. That should happen. And Joran well, kind of nods. Yes. However, that happens. We we can make that happen. Good. Well, uh, like like I said, we'll uh, since we got that, we'll work on that, and we'll talk to these other people. I'm sure we can get them to see it your way. But we'll uh, good. We're gonna yes, go. We uh, you. That, yeah, yeah. We don't want to. Yeah, you have so many more important things to do to talk to nobodies like us. <clears throat> he doesn't even agree. He just he's off, and Joran is left kind of sweating and following you around, his faithful adjutant. So, uh, all seems to be set then. I've uh, I'll, I'll, I'll set up a meeting with uh, whoever needs to be at the da data hub and the medical facilities, and mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and and you can speak with General Dante and Lady Orleans and whoever else you you need to, and you can reach me uh, via uh, this com channel, and uh, whenever you need me, I'll be there. All right, we got got the input in. Jordan, you've been so helpful. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. That means more than you know. I've it's been so long since I've had a compliment. That's uh, well, you're, very our capable. you're very capable. Our condolences. <laughs> what do you mean? It's so uh, honored to be in a position such as this. yeah, yeah. But it's it's not an easy job. Yeah, I'm well, sure you no, are. But then it shouldn't be, as the governor says. A man's job isn't easy, but it is necessary. That's it's very poignant. I think so as well. I printed it in his memoirs. If you want a copy, then I can have them sent over. They're very good. I, only if it's I, first I, edition and signed. Yes, uh, I wrote it. Uh, it was dictated to me by the governor, but it's very, very good. So I guess I want your signature then. So strong. <laughs> Very good. All right then. Uh, I've got so much to do. Uh, I'll see you all later. 
Oh, okay. oh, and if you do ever get a chance to uh, to, to relax, uh, then then come by to my uh, my sector, and uh, the drinks are on me. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you, Jorn. Thank you. He smiles and uh, scurries off throughout the halls. Well, uh, that governor is bug fucking crazy. Everybody on this planet is bug fucking crazy. Okay, they're too rich to have sense. Because that's like that's too small a denomination for them to care about. So here's the wait, thing. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, I will What's try that? to see if we are under surveillance. Because mm, that's okay. the thing. Go ahead. Yeah, let's uh, start the extended yeah. skill list. Yeah, start to uh, start slowly meandering through these vast hallways until we can find a quiet corner. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, the hallways are like filled with. Um, you're not being uh, surveilled, Elk, on your 16, as far as you know. Uh, the servitors like have uh, like mics on them, I guess, so they're like ambiently picking up uh, everything, and that goes into their data log. So if someone like checked that and downloaded that, if you were close to a servitor, they would be able to figure out your conversation. But it's unlikely that anyone would do that. Uh, there are, you know, cameras and servitors around watching, but uh, you guys can go to, like, private chambers. Um, if you were to... Uh, you've been given, like, uh, rooms here, so uh, one of the servitors will lead you to your private chambers, and you can uh, check for any bugs. There's none in here. Yep. Uh, it seems like the governor's being forth, uh, forthright with you in that regard. Yeah, we, we are uh, free to talk. Okay. So this is what I think should happen. I think you should check into Jorn's family first. They have the most to be angry about. They're the least to suspect because, oh, their moon got taken, right? You just heard him. He never gets a compliment. He wants to get out of here, but he does the governor's bidding. Just screams of motive to me. But we definitely should try to figure out if somebody is contacting these orcs because that'll be the... Uh, we can If we can cut the head off, hopefully the snake can wither. If they don't have any leadership. But what yeah, I have I mean, for plan... Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, uh, yeah, uh, you're the military mind, so... Oh, it's so uh, long ago, though. And uh, this sounds pretty much like a military operation. Well, much too much is thinking. Orcs are happy they follow one goal. And if if the warlords can be smart, uh, smarter than this governor, uh, if all else failed, we could always run their fleet into the Imperial fleet before they leave. Well, I was going to say, wait. maybe maybe Ilk, if you can find the transmissions, maybe we can copy that frequency and send them different orders. Uh, uh, that also reminded me, uh, did you think about how to use the space station? Seems to have an yeah, so this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we set it to overload. You draw the orcs in by a retreat, a hasty, oh, we're, we're being overtaken. So therefore they get overconfident. They swarm the station, you detonate it, you can take out who knows how much of their force. What do you that think? Was, yeah, that was a little bit smarter than what I'm, I suspected, so... I was oh, yeah. thinking, you know... Uh, Sending the space station in and crash into the mining moon? That's silly. Space stations oh, can't move. Yeah, I don't, know if it, yeah I don't know if it can move. Yeah, I don't know if it can move that hard. So the the, the bulwark, yeah. yeah, it's pretty much static. It's attached to the orbit. Uh, potentially, you could um, you know, like uh, detach <laughs> it and send it off. But <laughs> you've got no idea how that would work. But like. Possibly, but also like it would do nothing, right? Like the like the bulwark itself is like a peeing compared to a moon or a you know world. It's it's pretty small. It would it would cause some substantial damage to whoever it crashed, but it's not going to you know take out uh, a fleet. Let's see if we can set it to overload the reactor to yeah. overload. I know a lot of machine spirits will pa perish in this, but their sacrifice to the Imperium of Man. Will be uh, properly uh, codified and, and marked in the in the annals of history or whatever. Trinity, this whole time, has just been working away on her little pad, and uh, hearing the tactical talk come to an end, she says, 
and I have a few suggestions for an improvement on the governor. With a few biological reassignments, he will be much more effectual as a leader, able to communicate with both men and women, which seems to be a current problem he possesses. You know, I would say if you're going to treat that, you shouldn't tell him what you're treating. That would be my only advice. <laughs> Noted. Yeah, you get the sense that the Lord, uh, sorry, uh, Captain Locke's uh, hesitance is not in small part due to her distaste for the general and mm-hmm. the general population of the masses. Right, I right. agree with the initial diagnosis. He is indeed a pompous asshole. Yeah. Is there <laughs> also a tactical, te- tactical reason for the Navy to stay? Uh, I don't have to like the planet. But is there well, any asset uh, here for them to stay? I think there is a monetary advantage because the people here are quite rich, so... Uh, but I don't uh, think... Yeah, that hasn't um, been enough. Probably, yeah. Um, the incentive for them is that they have an alliance with the Marsis, and so, like, defending the Marsis is, like part of what they can opt in to do. It's not like they're bound to do it and the Imperium do as they wish. You know, they defend which planets that they see fit. Um, obviously, they stand to gain by the Marsis existing because they reap in a huge amount of taxes, but mm-hmm. not if they're going to lose their fleet in this sector. Um, the Corona sector, if it was, if the fleet was defeated, they couldn't defend it from other threats. Perhaps the is worth a lot. Perhaps the intimidating presence of the Force would in fact save resources in the long run. Mm. This is true. Alright, so we have a lot of... uh... This is what I think we should do first. I think we should hack the communications, because if we can find evidence of a traitor, we can bring that to Captain Locke. And that would be more incentive for her to come in and clean house, so to speak. Um, I don't know. I think if we if we gave her something, you know, some way to weaken the orcs, I think she'd uh, be yeah, yeah. Uh, as, you, as you're discussing this, a servitor enters into the room, uh, and uh, it <laughs> hands you the message on a data sheet that Captain Locke has requested an audience with you, at your own pleasure. Okay, leisure rather. Could be pleasurable. <laughs> uh, better, um, better make sure I use some mouthwash. Um, <clears throat> I have yeah, some I'll, in uh, my kit. Send, I'll send a response. Uh, uh, thank you, Trinity. You're ever helpful. Dental hygiene uh, send... is very important. You only have one set of gums. Um, yeah, I'll send a response. Like, uh, be there in uh, a, a couple of hours. Yeah, that should be gave us time enough to do an assessment. Perhaps if we could identify... And then she realizes the avatar is in the room. And she stops. And she waits. Yeah, kind of like... And goes out. <laughs> Perhaps if we could identify the information leak, that would be interesting and important information for the Admiral. General. Mm-hmm. I forget what her title is already. Because also because if it is chaos, like like Crazy Bones uh, McBlitz thinks, uh, she might be less likely to leave because to leave behind known chaos. I mean, if chaos that is, is spreading. That's her. That's that's heresy. And maybe we uh, maybe we tell the Inquisition, like ah, we've already informed the Inquisition of this chaos being here, so we have a, we're just waiting for the response. Something like something along those lines. I think yeah, that could she be, would be a bound good... to stay if, if there was like a threat on Demarcus. So. so this is the yeah. thing, Il, no matter what, you're going to find chaos. So let's go find some chaos. Yeah, okay. Worst right. comes to worst, we can uh, manufacture some. And maybe uh, maybe we can get down there, because uh, they did say that there'd be a lot of people around. Uh, Happy, do you think you could provide a distraction? Maybe like, uh, I don't know. 
Remember that? Remember that time that we broke into that 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 bunker and you did the whole like, oh, I'm I'm, I'm freaking out, and you had sparks flying off, and they were like, what's going on? And I was like, and I shot everybody. And it was awesome. Maybe we could do that, but just distract people enough for Ilk to 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 break into the hub. But and no it'll shooting. Be just have access now. Well, we've ac- we have access, but he did say that it would be uh, it would be heavily watched. So we don't maybe necessarily want people to know what we're looking into. You know what I mean? Yes, th- there's a tactical advantage to that. Um, Ilk, if you can give us a sign when you need privacy, I will. Yeah. If you so. Sure. Cool. <clears throat> so yeah, let's head down to the data hubs. Okay. Trinity, maybe yeah, you should you uh, maybe you should come along. You're our doctor, right? Yes, that is why I wanted access to the medical databases. Oh yeah, I'm sure it's down there too. Okay, you uh, <laughs> can take a little uh, uh, planetary cruiser over to uh, the central data communications hub. Uh, it's a sprawling center that looks uh, very, very corporate. There are just servitors uh, all crawling over this place, and you'll even see a few uh, mechanically armed tech priests uh, and alike who probably eye happy with. Uh, somewhat of a, uh, a predatory eye, recognizing him, recognizing him to be something that they could uh, uh, work on, <laughs> perhaps. Um, and uh, as you uh, get there, you, actually, one of the tech priests will uh, greet you. Greetings. We have heard that you are here to surveil our databases. Yeah. Um. Greetings, by the way. Greetings. Uh, I'm Ilk. Should we Good. bow? Okay, no, no, don't, don't bow to these people. Blessings of the Emperor upon you. <clears throat> Blessings of said. the Omnissiah upon you. What is uh, it that you yeah. wish to see? I can take you to the uh, required... Uh, system well, we I need some the... Yo, go ahead yeah we need some access to uh, long range uh, communication trying to see if we can intercept some of the orcs I see I will take you to the interplanetary communication center please follow me uh, his eyes were and his uh, machine body turns as he leads you through these vaulted corridors uh, towards uh, basically a gigantic server. Um, there's probably about half an hour of just strolling through this place. Uh, loads of servers around, tech priests and the like, uh, all who are dealing with... Uh, this is basically like walking into a stock exchange. <laughs> like Some of this is like, you know, uh, governmental business and like official stuff. The rest of it is clearly they're running like this this economy in here um it is this huge central server uh with various different uh data slabs and the like for uh ilk to take a look at gestures with one of his arms and says you may peruse we will be watching them yeah yeah oh of of course and uh, of trinity you you needed to look at one of the servers too right Yes. Uh, could you show me to the medical banks, please? He uh, pulled his head towards you. Very well. You may come with me. Uh, there's no one actually else in the room with you, but it's clear that you're being uh, surveilled, uh, Ilk. Um, and you would know that a place like this has you know, its own firewalls and uh, yeah. protection. Uh, up, so they will be watching you as well as quite literally watching you. Trinity, he leads you uh, for another like 10 minutes uh, into uh, another server room uh, with the medical banks on. Trinity and pulls I... out like a little hyper spray and she sprays down all of the console before she'll go near it with a super <laughs> fine anti back mist, followed by a flash of blue uh, black light over the top of it. He, uh, he watches you, but unblinkingly. Many hands make light work for germs. 
He doesn't comment. What would you, um... What would you like to be looking into here? Uh, she's literally just hunting down that infectious disease things, but what she's doing as well is keeping her Vox open and kind of her personal contact open so that if Measley needs her to do something to cause a distraction or to boop boop so that he can hack through her access terminal, she's like ready to do that. Okay. She's adding like a secondary access point for Measley. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also afraid of Rage and Press, there's 10 pounds to give the Doom Gauntlet to the party. It's a pretty cool magic item from the uh, equipment list. Uh, of Dark Matter, which gives you a plus three bonus to attack and damage rolls made of this magic weapon. The gauntlet contains a wow. single charge. When you hit a target with an attack made of this weapon, you can expend this charge to deal an additional 1d4 mega, which is 1d4 times 100 force damage. Once the charge is expended, roll a d4 <laughs> on a 1, the weapon collapses into dust. On any other roll, the weapon takes 3d6 days to regain its charge. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. I've got an idea where that might come in uh, in hand. Happy? Happy, you're about to be really happy. <laughs> you're about to be yeah. the happiest happy. Look at this. Oh, no, no, no. Don't nobody say anything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, phone's anything. my phone's been like I mean, listening to me, apparently, and it searched, How old is Bill Nye Day? I went on my command. <laughs> what, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Your phone it went on its own command. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Look at that fucking shit. It's like search for Bill Nye. <laughs> All right, Siri. You were talking about science, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, fuck, it's after me. As soon, wait, as mm. soon as Mage Hampress send in the Doom call, and my phone starts talking and stuff. All right. Oh. FBI watching. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, for the priest probably watching. Probably man. <laughs> So the priest watching Trinity is literally this, you know. going through record upon record about infectious diseases and if she runs out of that, she's moving on to some sort of other medical thing and just she seems to be taking a genuine interest in kind of copying things. <laughs> We're just like fucking geeking out on their medical yep. shit. <laughs> it's like no. I'm no, one happy um, little alien human. Uh, the Marsis uh, Medical Center is one of the most uh, well-funded ones that you've probably seen. Uh, so people don't get sick here. Um, when they do get sick, they've got a sort of like state-of-the-art tech and, uh, and healing technology to, uh, to help them. Prevention is very um, much in Trinity's interest. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can be geeking out on all, all of this stuff. Uh, it doesn't really have a history of anything um, like particularly strange or odd. Um, but that's information in and of itself. Uh, meanwhile, Ilk, um, you can like <laughs> see on your data lab that Trinity is uh, it's just like looking up medical shit again. She does this all the time. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> it's rarely useful to your interests, but uh, you know she enjoys it. So there's that. Um, what would you like to be doing? <laughs> I would try, like to try to hack in through both, both ways at the same time, so that I split it up so it isn't just one entry point. Okay, and, uh, cool. Trying, trying to make it seem like it's not just this place, so... Uh, okay, so you're sort of doing like a, a broad sort of attack yeah. on the network. Yeah. Okay. Uh, roll me a... Uh, yeah, roll me that data use. And um, see how that goes. It's gonna be a little difficult. That's it's pretty a good though. Twenty-two. So um, the first roll gets you past the security. Uh, the initial sort of uh, we can tell that someone's in, yeah. and uh, that would just jump you right out of the network. Uh, the network has a, uh, a second uh, finer firewall written into the code, um, and that's going to be. The problem for for Ilk, like you can immediately see once you're going through this data is like ah oh, they've been clever they've put in a second one because I always get past the first one. <laughs> um, so uh, if you want to get past that, that's another roll um, on a data use. But then you're pretty sure you'd be in, and it's just a matter of sifting through the material. Yeah. Uh, do I see some kind of information about? Uh, I mean. Uh, 
they will probably not be talking about chaos people. No, uh, uh, at probably... this point, basically what's happened is all of the numbers and letters are jumbled up, and like the yeah. matrix code is going past right now. Um, and when you hit through the second firewall, that's when you're like, yeah. ah, all these letters make sense. Okay. Uh, I, I hope this works. And that's 17. Okay. 17 is damn good. Um, yeah, this is like entering the restricted section of the library in Harry Potter, but in the, the, da in the data code. Um, you're now in to the private logs of pretty much everyone on the planet that sent anything off-world. Uh, which is to say, a huge amount of information. Yeah. Um, they're sending just code upon code upon code. You got just so much stuff to go through here. But um, yeah, there are messages and logs of trade and that kind of thing from uh, from all over. Yeah, uh, I, I will uh, first try to uh, narrow it down to the people we met in the uh, 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 the, yeah, the council meeting palace. Uh, and, and and also uh, for Joran's family. Okay. To see if, because those are right. probably narrowing it pretty significant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joran's family have got uh, fingers in many pies. You find um, just going for this is probably it takes you about an hour or so uh, to like sift through logs and the like. While the rest of you guys sit patiently or impatiently around. The Alexander family uh, have many somewhat dubious fingers in many clearly illegal pies. Um, that's not to say that they're doing anything which they're, like, touchable for. It's not something like, haha, then we send in the Chaos Warriors. It's just, like, a, a large range of, like, uh, insurance and, like, tax scams and the like. They send it to off-world colonies where they're... The tax havens and that kind of thing they're like siphoning off billions upon billions of you know credits every second but like whatever you know like that's they're pretty much untouchable as it is right like this is something that the imperium probably are aware of but there's nothing they can really do about it um which is to say the alexander family you know have no scruples um and a lot of that siphons through demarsis but You've got nothing on them, which is to say that they are part of any kind of like illegal sect. Uh, certainly, there's there's nothing to say that, and you would su suspect that if they were clever, they probably wouldn't have it on file anymore. They probably have yeah. gone back and deleted it. Yeah, and I will also look at uh, messages towards the mining colony. Uh, again, uh, you got a, a lot to go through there. Um, a couple of things uh, take your take your interest. Um, the first of which being that uh, Lady Orleans of the uh, like planetary uh, navy um, uh, was the the one to suggest first of all that uh, Chorda's folly be. Uh, evacuated. She is the one that said everyone else get off, and she is the one who uh, her navy took um, all of the people off planet, basically all of the rich off planet and back to Damasus and left the miners there and the the general populace to die. That's in itself not a crime, but um, you know you get the sense that she is a little bit less than scrupulous herself. And of note, uh, you see uh, very large uh, deposits of money going from uh, the Alexander Corporation to uh, Lady Orleans. When did that payment go through? Around the same know. time. I... Yeah, so around the same time as the... Her... Yeah, they, they paid her to uh, evacuate themselves. Yeah, but maybe they paid her to evacuate the moon so they couldn't fight the orcs. Saying we might have the start of a conspiracy here. Always follow the money. Yeah. Who else have That's... they paid? Yeah, uh, 
I will try to see if I can f pull it up. Uh, yeah, um, I something else I'll give you. Uh, it just roll me one more day to roll, actually, as you're just sifting yeah. through this, uh, this info. Staying on the network is dangerous in itself. Yeah, that's worse. 11. Uh, yeah. You've got limited time left on the network before uh, you're going to be, like, flagged and yeah. they're going to know. Um, what you do manage to scrape out before you're going to have to be out of this thing uh, is that General Dante has, uh, has been paid, but he sent all these transactions right back. So they've, like, deposited money into his bank account, a lot of money, and he sent it right back. So um, that's of note. Okay, we need to talk to him first. Yeah, uh... Because you don't send money unsolicited to people. And if he then got cold feet, then... Uh... <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, I, I, need I, I, need, I, need, I need to plug out. I need to plug out. Uh, they are. Alright, yeah, no, no, no. We don't need... Uh, yeah. I trust you. Well, I suppose we should scoop up our good doctor and uh, go have a conversation with old uh, General Dante. Yeah. Oh, uh, Servitor! And he'll... <laughs> Cal will beckon. Yeah, he got, Servitor. like, a, a peer uh, from uh, the room and with Trinity. Yes. And I will send some... Uh, a message to Trinity to um, tell her to download medical records for uh, Dante and... Olean's, Olean's families. Okay. Do I need to look those up? Yeah. Do I need to uh, dare us if, if, you, if you'd like to, you can you can stay on the medical uh, stuff. It's unfortunately not too interesting, like medical wise. Uh, General uh, Dante has uh, he's seen fights, so he's got like uh, some like cybernetic enhancements, that kind of thing. Uh, he's been like shot in the lungs plenty of times so that's kind of shit uh, nothing which strikes you as suspicious he's certainly been into the medical facility here uh, plenty of times so but he's they, for his... um... no but you go ahead sorry i was gonna say are the the records available for the governor as well or are they behind a firewall you would have to imagine that the governor has access to all of this information no i mean his files Oh, sorry. Uh, no, the governor's files. Uh, yeah, well hidden. Well hidden. Okay. I'll uh, yeah. I'll download uh, what I can grab yeah. without having to hack or anything, uh, as requested. Um, and I'll make okay. a note of. What I'll do is I'll try and bring up the governor's files so that Measley can try and get a sense of what defenses there are on it. I yeah. you can see the error code or whatever that comes up and says no, you can't get into this. Uh, and then I'll. I'll shrug it off and log out. Okay. Uh, and thank you to uh, Mage and Press. Twitter of Vector is ten pounds. Mage and Press have heard rumors the fabled gamma pendant could be found in this area. If the party were to search, perhaps they find a clue to its location. Uh, this thing's pretty cool. Awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, the gamma pendant. Mm, that sounds cool. As uh, as the guy comes in, uh, the, the tech priest, uh, one more thing before you go. He looks towards Happy and says, The governor has instructed us to help you any way we can. We have this. And uh, he uh, extends with one of his mechanical arms, uh, this essentially this fist, uh, this clawed fist, um, which can be attached to your arm. Uh, and it's got, it looks like highly explosive as well. Um, and it kind of charged, it's clearly charged with, uh, with energy. This looks like a suitable upgrade. It nods. Very well. And, uh, you guys are leaving? Where yeah, you guys I will headed? take it, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In English language, that both says thank you. <laughs> yep. He understands. So, uh, where would you guys like to go next, or who would you like to speak with? We would probably oh, yeah. try to uh, talk to uh, General Dante. 
Yeah, that's that's why I was beckoning the uh, the servitor over to send a message to Dante that we'd like to chat with him when he has a chance. Yeah, uh, the like he sends back a data uh, message uh, to you guys, which is pretty short and succinct. Uh, it gives his location in the barracks and says you can meet him whenever, but he is busy. Uh, oh, of course, he's playing he's, defense. He strikes here. you. Yeah, he, he strikes you as. Uh, from reading up on him, Trinity, like a bit of a war hero. Um, he clearly does love uh, like defending people. That's like part of he's like he's like an old you know soldier, basically honor and that kind of thing. Uh, the good fight and all that. Um, hey, uh, tri- oh sorry, no, no, no. Uh, tr- Trinity, uh, what did you find on on the good lady Orleans? What what did you find in her medical record? You said that uh, Dante's been there many times, many wounds. He's obviously shed blood for this planet. What about her? What's she done? I pull up the file. Uh, yeah, you've managed to download the stuff that you took a look at onto your own data sheet. Uh, she has not seen uh, active service. Uh, she's a fairly new hire. Uh, into the uh, Navy of the Masters. Uh, she's perhaps been here like five years. Um, and it's Do like I a pleasure s- planet, so it's maybe not uncommon that she's um, hasn't seen service because it's not like they're repelling invasions every day. Uh, General mm-hmm. Dante comes from different sectors, and you know he used to be part of the Imperial Guard. Now he's retired and works here instead. Um, so maybe that's not un- unusual. Do I see uh, from her medical files evidence of where she was before she was here? She lives on Damasus and always has done. Always has. Okay. I will share that information. Yeah, she's a native. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. Let's 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 go chat. Let's have a chat with this general. Uh, the uh, like the barracks uh, is the most military uh, section of the masters that you've you've seen, where everything else is pleasure. Uh, this place is almost completely function. Um, mm-hmm. There are small cruises and military vessels that fly around, uh, and you have to go through like an hour of getting clearances and being checked and like boarding whatever cruise vessel you're on and checking you for. Uh, weapons or any illicit goods, that kind of thing, before you're allowed to even get uh, into the barracks itself. General Dante clearly takes security very seriously, and by the time that you're in, you've been stripped of your weapons uh, and any illicit materials that you guys might have, uh, as is planetary law um, when when speaking with the general. Um, Mm. When you finally get through to his quarters, you're probably quite frustrated with this process and somewhat tired as well. Dante himself is an old-looking soldier. He wears his... uh, He wears like an old, faded Imperial Guardsman uniform, um, though it's uh, clearly not seen uh, any care or attention for probably decades. Uh, He's bald and uh, several scars and wounds all over him, carries the last pistol on one hip and stands over a command table uh, as you walk in. Mm. Trinity, having been stripped of nearly everything she's brought with her because they can't identify what the various liquids and things are, is now just wearing a mask for hygiene and generally like like sucking herself in to make herself as small as she can so she doesn't get breathed on or touched by any of these people. Right. The, uh, Trinity, the, yeah. you've been working out? Maybe. No, you just seem thinner. I don't know. <laughs> the general uh, uh, praises you all and says, So, you're the ones that uh, the governor's brought on for the planet, then, are you? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, trying to trying to get a trying to get a feel for uh, what the plan is uh, from each part, just so we can try to convince uh, convince old Locke to stay and uh, you know give the good fight. Yeah. I had all your records looked up. Interesting bunch, a lot of you. Oh? Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Uh, He looks at... uh, (laughs) 
<laughs> he looks at Kel with a no-nonsense look of uh, you know every army sergeant that's ever existed, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, and says, "Yeah, quite an interesting record you've got there, Kel. Got into a yeah, lot of trouble is. with the guards, did you?" It is, it is, sir. Uh, you seem like a man that, that loves his men. That uh, that is honorable to a fault. Is that is that a fair assertion of your character? I'd like to think so. So why don't you give me one good reason why I don't call Captain Locke right now and tell her everything that is you've been up to? I think she'd be real interested. Uh, most mostly because of, uh, and he kind of looks over at Happy. It's like, uh, because my friend there, because they were gonna put him on the scrap heap, because they didn't want to invest in him, bring him back. They wanted to just scoop his brain out and make him a servitor, and I just couldn't couldn't do that. He saved my life now, more times than I can count. And now I am happy. And now he's happy. So I, t- I took my friend. I left the guard. Yeah, I know. I know it's not honorable, but um, I just couldn't let him go. I'm sorry. So if you need to call Locke and, and get me thrown in chains for uh, for saving a good friend and a good guardsman from a, from an ill fate... I can't stop you. The uh, happy will uh, push a button on his uh, breastplate, and a little uh, a little uh, cover goes open, where an uh, imperial uh, imperial uh, ranking insignia of a sergeant uh, pops up, uh, like half burned, uh, half cut, and pops it most back. <laughs> See. He uh, looks at Trini and says. Something strange about you as well. You know, your records are very strange. You know, I've never seen anyone write the word human quite so much on official documentation before. It is important to be accurate in one's documentation. Is it not? I see no anomalies. Please. Open my records. Let us address your concerns. Hmm. I don't see why four jumped up rogue traders should be coming onto my planet and messing around with what we've got going on here. We were invited. <clears throat> we answered the call, that. sir. Yeah, we answered the call, sir. That's why we're here. And yeah, we might stand to make a lot of money, sure, but we'd have to stand and fight, wouldn't we? Maybe. Is that something you're willing to do? It could be. If I think we have a fighting chance, and I think we do. But we need to get to the bottom of a few things, sir. What do you know about all the people around here? It doesn't seem like everybody's too keen on, uh, on staying and defending their home. Most sure, of them see what you do. They're opportunists. Yeah? When there's an opportunity to run, they take it. Well, I mean, I'm I'm not running. I'm here I'm here talking to you about planetary defense. Am I not? We'll see if we'll see for how long that lasts. No. Not many people are willing to stay. In fact, it's only that general, sorry, governor, that's willing to stay. So you're not willing to uh, stay? Orleans. Oh, I am. I'll stay until my last breath. That's what's asked of me. Mm. And Orleans wants to bug out, I assume. She's not so keen. Hasn't seen any active service before. We're behind the ears. Yeah, yeah. As for Locke, she seems honorable enough. It's not her fight. Well, it's not her fight, but she could uh, tip the balance, don't you think? Right, she could. But she's just doing her job. No yeah. way that if I were in her position, I would stay. I swore an oath, though. Yeah, you swore an oath, uh, but she swore some oaths, too, and... Um... I have some sources that have pointed us towards uh, the possibility and uh, Kel will kind of like look around conspiratorially 
<clears throat> that there might be a, a chaotic influence here, that there might be corruption about. He uh, raises his eyebrows and doesn't seem to like the sound of that at all. Chaos. You, uh, that's quite an accusation to be making of my planet, son. Well, that's that's why I'm not running around screaming it. I'm here talking to you, the man that could uh, do something about it. Let me tell you, if could I you even not? had a whiff of any kind of heresy going on around here, I would stamp it down like that. I haven't. Have you, have you, have you noticed uh, anybody, like, asking odd things... Of people here, strange things, payoffs, mm. anything like that. That's the trade of Damasis. That's how this whole place works. Anonymous payments, that kind of thing. Appear in your bank yeah. account one day, then you receive a letter, maybe, or a message saying that you should do something. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have you have That's you received any? Before. I have, and if you check the logs, you'll see that I have something right back again. I'm not taking any what, handouts. What, uh, what, uh, hand, what, what, what was asked of you, if you don't mind me asking? The Alexander Corporation are manipulators, as far as I can see. Same they wanted me to do all sorts before take shipments here, look the other way, that kind of thing. I mean, it's all politics and bullshit as far as I'm concerned, but nonetheless, I'm not having any of it. They mm -hmm. wanted me to assist Admiral Lo uh, Admiral Bo Admirable, fuck me, Admiral Orleans in uh, the escort movement, but uh, I wasn't taking that. That's a slippery slope right there. Mm -hmm. As soon as you take one payment, you'll take the next. Yeah, once they got you on the hook, it's hard to uh, unseat it. I understand that. Okay. But if if the Alexander family was uh, prepared to uh, pay to be evacuated from one planet, perhaps they are doing the same here then. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past them. Let's say, let's say that. They're weasels and scum. They just wear fancy suits, fly around in fancy spaceships. But they're the same as any uh, hiver you've ever met. They'll sell you for mm. a nickel. Can't trust them at all. A heresy? Don't know about that. Unless you've got some strong evidence. Then, well, that's uh, what we're looking. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. They do say that power corrupts. I can promise you, if I had found anything, even a whiff of that kind of thing, I'd have been all over them. Okay. Hmm. You have stated about so many times that you do not sense heresy. That is curious. Can you explain your anomaly in this accounting? Explain how I haven't seen anything. No, Explain really. your protestations that you have not seen anything. As you have questioned my mentioning of human many times in my records, I question your mentioning of not noticing heresy many times in yours. I can smell a Xeno scum from a hundred yards, sweetheart. I don't that like being questioned small. about my honor. <laughs> I'm doing a fine job here. Stand up job. <clears throat> I am certain you are. And your ability to sniff out Xenos is a useful physiological condition. Yeah, most humans I have, have to that. take a look at your records. They were not noted there. There is some missing in that accounting. Uh-huh. All right. Anything else? <laughs> no, I think uh, you're doing okay over there, Charlie. Um, 
Hmm. Unless anybody else has uh, any other questions. Yeah, I can't think of anything right now. It's been what are uh, you going to questions I had. Why don't you go and talk to Lady Orleans? Go sniffing around her and see if you can't get dig something up on her, eh? Yeah, maybe we'll, yeah, we'll do that. Ah, she might not be as uh, clean as she seems. She's in the pocket of the Alexanders. And if there is some mischief going on with them, you can bet she's involved as well. Mm. You know what? If you've got access to stuff that I don't, check to see if they're making any plans, any movements of uh, ships, that kind of thing. If they're getting ready to leave, or if they're getting ready to go anywhere. You see, uh, there's something on the Marsis. They what, say, what's, at least. What's that? I don't know exactly. There's all sorts of stories about this place somewhere they think um, that the Marsis itself was built upon. They say whatever this item or artifact was, it's what gave the Marsis all of its wealth, all of its beauty, splendor. Only problem is that the Marsis have been so built upon by everything that you can never find it. It's the ancient lost treasure tale that you'll find on any planet. Well, the Alexanders, ah. they love this story. Interesting. So you but, think they'd probably uh, not want to leave this behind? I don't think so. But I tell you this much, the governor hasn't let them dig anywhere. Not on Damasus, not in the city, where I said this item would lie. Ow. I'm not much one for conspiracy theories, but... The city were gone. The horde of orcs came through and raised the place down, and left off to blow up some other place. Why, well, you could do all the digging you'd want. Oh my god. You know what? Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. Be seeing you. You mind if we send a message to Lady Orleans saying uh, we're uh, heading that way? All means. Calls on a servitor who sends a message. Uh, she accepts. Okay. okay. Hey, Ilk, can you uh, can you just like get into like local data? about, you know, yeah. local legends, see possibly yeah. what this could be? Yeah, that would be no problem. How about archaeology specialists? Yeah, that, that narrows aware. it down. That narrows it down quite a lot, yeah. Alright. So and yeah, I we'll okay. look up that while we Flip down my uh, hacking riggy goggles. And... Okay. Uh, Romy a data, yes. Hacking into like the general web is easier than into a uh, like a unique protected server. <laughs> oh yeah, easy peasy. <laughs> um, the uh, most prominent architect within uh, or on Damasus is one Michael Arendt. Spelt like this. Uh, he works for you guessed it, the Alexander Corporation. But in so does everyone, right? Like. Everyone well, yeah. works for yeah, none of this. But um, yeah, he uh, he has a uh, you know uh, like a build a facility of his own, uh, and he's like responsible for like building in Damascus, like building new sectors, designing palaces, the ice sculptures, that kind of thing. That's his his whole shtick. Uh, I, I will also try to see if I can find any. Uh, anything in the spaceport area about. Uh, ships uh, getting prepared that is connected to the Alexanders. Yeah. Okay, yeah. If there's a, a, an abnormal um, amount of uh, preparation made... There's, there's definitely increased fueled. activity and increased, uh, increased chatter. Um, that may be that they're, like everyone else, preparing for a possible evacuation. Uh, so there's definitely uh, movement. But there's, yeah, there's uh, movement everywhere. 
Yeah, there's movement from the Alexanders, but you know, uh, that's everyone. But on the other hand, uh, Doran said that he was staying. So, uh, hmm. it's possible, you know. I think we should try to find uh, out what this uh, ar- artifact is or whatever. Yeah. That way we have a little. Also, uh, well, I was referring mm. to archaeologists, like people that dig up stuff. Like yeah. ancient treasure. He, he does this as well. Yeah, he um, like he's a, a treasure hunter as well. Like as as part of his sort of background. Um, but uh, the thing on Damascus is that you're not allowed to dig uh, pretty much anywhere. It's like very strictly regulated digging uh, because like there are important like fossils and uh, minerals that they mine. Uh, for you know, for money basically. So, uh, archaeological digs are few and far between. He's led a few, um, but those are like you know, twenty years in the planning before you can get permission, and only if you've paid the governor a ridiculous amount of money, that kind of thing. And certainly, and usually on like the outlying parts of the uh, the planet, rather than in its its core. Uh, if you're in a capital, on, it's uh, like, yeah. or on a nearby mining world, right. That's that's fair game. Like Ch- uh, Chorda's folly is like, yeah, if I can farm the shit out of that place, we don't care, you know. But like on our Damascus in our capital city, it's like, how dare you, sir? You know, like that, kind of, that kind of deal. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you guys head off to meet with Lady Orleans. Uh, she's wearing a long cape. By the time you walk into a uh, like naval center, similar deal, uh, like fairly uh, fair amounts of security to get through. You've already been cleared by like the army, basically the PDF, so uh, it's a lot easier to get through this time. Uh, uh, Lady Orleans, uh, long cape, long dark hair, uh, in her like early thirties or so, and uh, she looks at you with a, a thin smile. She's clearly not that pleased to see you either. Yes, having you're the ones. Been, Good. As I say, having been warned that she's not so clean, I've like spritzed myself with lots of uh, <laughs> anti back. Now that I've no, got my kit like, back. Yeah, window cleaner. I've got and two yeah, so, yeah. masks on. But, uh, tr- <laughs> Trinity, I think they were talking on. about. Uh, you, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Did I misunderstand something, Cal? I mean, no, it's it's something that any human could misunderstand. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> uh, Lady Orleans uh, greets you all as you, uh, you enter and says, I hear that you've just been from General Dante's location. Oh, well, of, well, of course. I mean, we were brought here to consult uh, on battle plans, so uh, that's that's what we're doing. We're, uh, I see you have been informed that you're working for the governor on important business you're a rogue traders sent in but none of you are actual rogue traders correct you're just lackeys of one well, yeah, i mean we are the crew the the rogue trader we are here at at, at his behest so to speak um we have the mandate right. we do have the mandate would you like to see it it's it's in date trust me i believe you Um, <laughs> yeah, you you'll actually like flashback to like you know like when you started the crew and you like had to nick a mandate from like a museum and you just pretend that it's, <laughs> it's an in day long. And... Who's Captain Harback? Oh, so anyway, sorry, uh, that'll be the, <laughs> it's the last Firefly reference. My bad. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, she she looks at you with no nonsense sort of attitude and. If there's something, you should get to it swiftly. I'm very busy, you see. Oh, well, we were just trying to, uh, to, um, we were trying to, uh, properly, uh, put a number on the orc force. Uh, we, we'd heard that you, you, you helped with the evacuation off the moon, yes? Correct, yes, I did. For my part, saved millions in the doing so. No, I, and that's a noble gesture. I mean, you're truly, a. uh, 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 yeah, you're a good person. <clears throat> some call me and, a uh, hero, but I found it difficult to get used to that title. I suppose I am in some people's eyes, but I wouldn't say that. 
Well, heroes rarely see themselves as such. It is only the lessers that look up and call them that, right? This is true. Uh, we are that way. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Um, so you, you you work you work closely with the Alexanders, yeah? From time to time, but if there's any business to be done on Damascus, then one must work with the Alexander family. The corporation is huge, spans across multiple systems. Yeah, they, would, would you say they're the largest? In this system, yes. Mm. So they have a lot of sway and a lot of pull. Well, they don't hold any official office, so... Not as such. The governor, for instance, well, he's a very powerful man. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's... Yeah, I mean, he got us here. He has to have some kind of pull. Um... So, uh, what what are what are your plans for the uh, for the defense of your of your homeworld here? I very much doubt it will come to that. My direction, as it has been to Governor Capac, is that we should evacuate and leave to a nearby sector with all given resources that we can. Yeah, I, I understand that. I understand that as well. Um, so, so I mean, you, you're, you're fully behind evacuation? You don't think we should defend? I don't see any other option. With Captain Locke having been uh, leaving, I don't see there's anything we can do to convince her now. She has her mind made up. Mm. Seems like it's very hard to change that. It is true, especially, especially when you don't try. Um... Interesting. Um, <laughs> sorry, my inner smart ass comes out too much. Um, so, anybody else? Anybody else got a uh, any thoughts? Well, please, please, Swift. We have to uh, arrange the evacuation. <clears throat> uh, 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 I have a question about the Alexanders. You seem the very sim- fascinated by them. Honestly, you can look up on any data sheet, and I'm sure yeah, you can yeah. learn more than anything yeah. I can tell you. No, 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 no I don't think so. Because... Data hmm? uh, it's really quite simple. I ha- I'm sure I have, one of my I have been using you. one or two in my life before. Uh, but uh, this takes more of, you know, a personal knowledge. Uh, because I... I see. Go on. Uh, we were uh, talking about uh, the... What was his name? Uh, sorry, I'm Joran? struggling to see the point here. Is there one? Or we are you we were talking to Joran, and if the Alexanders do not want to move, then uh, how are you uh, thinking about facilitating getting everyone Joran else off? is not the face or nor the mind of the Alexander family. No, he's something of an embarrassment. He may be dedicated oh. to the governor, and that may very well be sweet. But the Alexander family is pragmatic. No, they, they see the bigger picture of things, my friends. They're not going to allow millions here to die for the sake of the governor's uh, ego. No, if we must flee, then we will do so in given time. We'll do so correctly. The Alexander family are happy to finance the saving of millions of lives off on this planet. They're happy to pay me to do so as well. Oh, so they do pay you, huh? There are huge fees involved in such things. Why, yes, of course. Hmm. Have you ever tried to evacuate millions of people before, my friend? It costs a fair amount of money. I mean, we usually try to just get like 50 or 60 at a time. That's all we can take, really. (laughs) Um, really, I recommend an occupancy of only 45. At, at Trinity, we've gone over this. We'll we'll talk about this later. Um, hmm. The room grows tense. <laughs> Okay. Um, 
Well, unless anyone else has anything, I think we've uh, wasted enough of your time. I rather think so. I'm very busy here. I'm sure by the end of the day or tomorrow, Captain Locke will have confirmed her decision to leave. So I've got arrangements to make for the departure of the Alexander family. So if you don't mind, I think your job here is done. And I think it would probably be best for you all to leave back on that shitty little cruiser that you came in on and head to whatever near system you came from or whatever hive world birthed you all. All right. I can assure uh, you that no hive world birthed us. Really? Well, I, I mean, think you'd I'm, like I'm it a, on a hive world. I'm I really do. You'd fit right in. Yeah. Don't, yeah, no, she's fine. Trinity, let's, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, it appears that what afflicts the governor also afflicts this lady. With an additional symptom of wet behind the ears. <laughs> she is a bit of a greenhorn. Um... <laughs> okay. Is that is that is that symptom in your database? Um, it is not. I shall add it. Okay. Uh, so maybe we should leave and uh, talk to this Michael so. er Errant person. Oh, we, uh, yeah. We're gonna leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys head out. Yeah, I figure we're having this conversation <laughs> on the way out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, and I uh, maybe turn we should, around behind me and just the room a little bit. Uh, yeah, by, by this point, you all have uh, become very familiar with the uh, slow, bureaucratic nature of the Masses, so sort of no one being very keen to share anything with you all. Uh, but Michael Aaron's place is really open. Like you can just walk into his office, and uh, uh, he's got like a pal. I say his office. It's a palace, right? Like it's an ice palace. It's the most beautiful sculpture that you've ever seen. And Michael Aaron himself is this charming young guy, probably in his late twenties, um, but um, you know, very handsome, clearly very enigmatic, uh, and probably thinks of himself quite the explorer type, you know, hero. Uh, he thinks of himself as an Indiana Jones type, you can tell immediately. He has quite high opinions of himself. As you step in to his faulted chamber after getting access, he says, Hello! Welcome, welcome, welcome! Ah, yes, 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 you're the explorers from off-world. I love meeting explorers, fellow kinship. I feel that we all have, you know? it's uh, You've been exploring worlds, I've been making gigantic leaps in technology, in archaeology, in environmentology, in biology, and, you know, you've been finding things here and there, and I have been making my, my name famous on this planet. It's so good to meet some fellow, fellow explorers. I, uh, I, I have to Michael. say, I have to say, Michael. I have to say, Mr. Aaron. Mr. Please, Aaron, call me, it call is... me Michael. Call me Michael. Well, I, 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 I just want to say it is such an honor to meet you. We've heard so much about your, your Please. architecture. I mean, this this place it's a it's a it's a monument to human ingenuity. Wouldn't you say, Trinity? You're an expert on that, right? I have done my best to avail myself of many human interests. <laughs> yeah, it's a very human thing to say. Um, Why? <laughs> Yes. Well, I'm so, sure all of the things you've heard about me are bad. <laughs> but some of them are true. They're not all. And I bring up sure Spoogle, not. and I type in his name. Oh, it's like Playboy millionaire Michael Arendt secures himself another huge win. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, most popular celebrity on Dem Demarcus ever, you know. Uh, superstar <clears throat> Michael Aaron does it again, digs up ancient fossil, you know, this, this kind of thing. I turn my yeah. pad around. You are a most handsome human in this picture. <laughs> Please, uh, I am actually. That's quite what that's a good photo of me. Uh, they used they used the good one. Honestly, the other side is is awful. <laughs> it is a very pleasing angle. 
Well, well I'm sure I'm sure Mr. Aaron has knows many pleasing angles. Um, your physiology anyway. is most symmetrical. <laughs> Aren't you a smart one? <laughs> yes. She is. Yeah, she she's quite the uh, observer of the human condition. Um, Not just a pretty uh, face. Human conditions, Cal. You have many. We have many. He complimented right. you. Oh. So, it, uh, uh, Michael. What can I do? Please, God. Mike. Mike, you've done so much here. Uh, is, is there anything left? Like, I mean, with this this oncoming invasion, certainly there's things that uh, you're sad that might be left behind that you'll leave unfinished. Should you have to evacuate? I mean, is what would you say is uh, your greatest regret? Is should that come to pass? Well. Uh... <laughs> It does seem sad to leave behind such uh, such great things yet to be uncovered. My primary source that I would wish to get out of one day is the ancient planet shrine of St. Drusus. Now, there's a little bit of a story here in St. Drusus. A bit of a, uh, a legend, if you will. Whoever would find it would be a legend themselves. St. Drusus was a hero of the god emperor friend when he walked this earth and he found this planet this beautiful jewel in the stars now that we mm. call the Marsis, and he placed at the heart of it a shrine to the god emperor and to himself a little bit like the palace that i built here if you know <laughs> i'm sure and, uh, in well <laughs> In that shrine, he placed the most valuable items known to the God Emperor himself. These vessels, whatever they may be, would hold ancient knowledge and power in them. Whoever would find them, of course, would be gifted with these blessings and granted eternal life. Now, if that isn't a story, then I don't know what is. Unfortunately, of course, with all of this being swept away in an orc invasion, it may well be lost to time. It may be. How, how come you've, how, have you certainly you've searched for this place? Oh, certainly I have. I've been a busy man, but, you know, planning permission really is a bastard. You can't dig anywhere in the city at all. The general's orders, law. Rather awful, but, if you ask me, but... but... But surely you tried to uh, n nudge here and here and make him... Oh, trust me. We, the Alexander Corporation, have been pescering him for years about this thing. But for whatever reason, no amount of money will let you near that shrine, if it, if it even exists. Do General, you plan on leaving? not having any of it. Do you plan on leaving when the orcs arrive? Uh, you're, you're muted, Bastian, by the way. <laughs> Confused face. Uh, he, uh, he says, why, of course, I've got no reason to stay here. Well, wouldn't it be convenient when all of the rules go away? You could search freely. <laughs> oh, yes, well, my dear, be, but... If it exists? If it exists, and it's somewhere within the city some would say in the center of most point of the city itself you want to know where that is do you well i'll tell you it's where general capac's palace is the governor himself has built the palace over the shrine one of the primary reasons why i can't get any bloody planning permission because it's on his home very inconvenient he picked a good spot for it, though, didn't he? <laughs> for I could only get in there, into his <clears throat> private chambers, and have a little digging around. I'm sure I could find the thing. So, so he built there. the palace himself? It, it, I thought it was... Well, a... uh, yes, yes, and uh, it's been there for millennia, you see, but the governor has traditionally ruled there. Oh. The Capac family yeah. have had that place there for as long as anyone can remember. How old it's is the center most point of the city. How old is he? Uh, the governor's like 80. He's old. Does he have any, uh, you know, inheritors? I don't know. 
Don't think so. It's not always hereditary, though. He picks his successor. Could be anyone. <sighs> Could be that young Joran. Never do know. Or anyone with me, huh? <laughs> oh, if only. Right. You know, you all seem like the type who could do a few drinks. I've got this pleasure yacht, flies up in the sky, a couple thousand miles up. Beautiful sight. The drinks, amazing. The ladies, even better. What do you say? I no longer need to drink. Uh, I mean, it's not like sustenance okay. drinking happy. It's more for to make you ha happier. Happy. Is this a date? <laughs> yes, certainly it is. I would be interesting and engaging in such an experiment. Well, he looks towards Kel for a second. <laughs> Is she an off-worlder? Yeah, yeah, she's an off-worlder. Yeah, she's an off-worlder, and she's I a doctor. Off so oh, I she's... love doctors. So doctor. she likes to play doctor. If you know what I'm saying. Whoa. I know what you're saying. She likes you to like stay to in the role. Play Doctor Two. Oh, I see. Kinky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's she's absolutely filthy. <laughs> oh, trust no, me. I can assure uh, you. How do you how do you I get anything no done? It's a wonder to me. <laughs> sure thing, sweetheart. <laughs> Shall we? And he kind of like gestures towards like a you know a servitor with a. Like a car that's gonna take you off to this pleasure yacht in the sky. Um, well, I think that maybe we have a few other meetings to attend to today. Yeah. but maybe Pish. maybe what tomorrow. Could be more important than this. Um, a looming orc invasion. Uh, we'll be evacuated by tomorrow, I'm sure. Why not spend the last few hours upon the most beautiful planet? On the most beautiful sight. Or maybe if the group of you won't come, just the doctor. She said she was interested after all. May I, I mean, contact Trek? you at a later time? Things must be I taken under consideration. So. Very well. Playing hard to get, I see. Bye. You do consider me unclean. I must properly cleanse first. I understand. All right, then. <laughs> you go do that. Clean yourself up. And I'll meet you up there. They call it the 10,000 Mile High Club. <laughs> What's an appropriately accurate name? I appreciate that. <laughs> he looks towards Cal one last time. Absolutely filthy. And uh, he heads off. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> turn around. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, the uh, self proclaims archaeology sex icon leaves. <laughs> and the self proclaimed sex you icon doctor to... leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Self-proclaimed sex I sex <laughs> I can't even get the joke the out shit. <laughs> Self-proclaimed doctor, right? <laughs> Self-proclaimed archaeology doctor. You won't have to dig <laughs> his bone. He's more human than me. <laughs> oh, why'd you guys head next? <laughs> Please. Um I have a technical I've question. Oh, please, is yeah. the yacht capable of interstellar flight? Probably not, no. It probably is like just goes up, almost reaching orbit, but stays within planetary. Uh, Interesting, but could it reach the battle station that conveniently is in orbit? The... Oh, yeah. Interesting. Noted. Yeah, because the, the battle station is probably what is it still like, is it tethered to the planet by like a cable or something like that? Right. Yeah, yeah. So it could probably just get to that. It just useful just information. Be in orbit. 
Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah, so, we, we, um, we were invited to Captain Lock, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Imperial Guard uh, Navy Commander Captain Lock. Uh, she will greet you um, aboard a ship. Um, which is just hovering over Damascus, so you guys can fly up there. By this time, you're well into the night, because uh, you've been traveling all over Damascus. It takes a while to get around. Um, but she'll meet you up on her, like, uh, battle cruiser, you know, like, battleship, basically, which is a huge thing, which could hold <coughs> tens of thousands of Imperial Guardsmen. It's probably a very nervous atmosphere for a couple of you guys to be in uh, as you go through the checks and boundaries to get towards her. Uh, Captain Locke, uh, long blonde hair, navy uniform, uh... Looks towards you, and she looks like the first person that's been happy to see you guys. Hey, how's it going? Want a drink? Yes, uh, kind of late. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. All right, she goes in and gets out a decanter, <laughs> decanter of uh, alcohol, and hands out to those who will take it. And says, "So uh, you've been roped into this whole thing as well, then, hey?" Yeah, we we have actually, but uh, we've. I don't know if we've uh, uncovered a few things here that might be interesting to you. Got a tip that um, there's some uh, some some ill machinations going on on this planet. I'm not sure if chaos is touching it, but there are whispers. It's as much as I can I, say, I have heard similar whispers myself, and that's truth be told why I've even stayed this long. To see if there was anything else that needed to be destroyed before the orcs came in. Perhaps this is one of the only few moments where we could learn truly what the Alexander Corporation are behind. Now, I share this information with you on the uh, under the precursor that if you were to share this with anyone else, that you would be executed by the Imperial Navy. You understand? Oh, shit. Uh, I don't. I don't plan on uh, pissing off the Imperial uh, Navy anytime soon. That's a very good idea, Kel, because we do have your records, and we are aware of your previous crimes. But that is neither here nor there. The situation we find ourselves in right now is of higher precedence. The Alexander Corporation is a uh, organization that we in the Imperium are looking to take down. They have been siphoning money away from us for a very, very long time. And it's gotten to a point that my superior's feel is no longer one that we can sustain. Their power is growing in such quantity that, well, in some sectors, it's barely any uh, imperial presence whatsoever. We fear for their growing power and what that may mean in various different sectors. If the whispers are true, then not only have they corrupted themselves financially, but perhaps with other powers, they have allied themselves as well. There is something yeah. at the core of this planet which the Imperium is aware of. Again, we've heard you must never yeah, share this information with anyone else. It is a gamma pendant. This is an item of incredible power and significance to the Imperium. Said to be a fragment from the armor of the God Emperor himself when he walked this world. Needless to say, Wait, such power can be used to do incredible things. A single fragment of this would be enough to fuel Sectors, systems, a whole fleet, probably even more than we can truly understand. In the same regard, it has great destructive capabilities as well. Were it to be placed into the wrong hands, why then? We would be in some trouble. The General Say has been made court. aware of this. Yeah. Indeed. Or those servants of chaos who seek to subvert good people and good worlds. I am not quite sure the capabilities of its destruction, but let us say it would be very dangerous indeed. 
The governor, Kapak, has been made aware of the situation, and hence there are strict laws on digging anywhere upon Damasus, particularly upon the governor's palace, so that none may uncover this item. The governor himself protects it, along with some of our forces as well, but with the impending orc invasion, such things are untenable. We feel incapable of leaving this planet, but at the same time we can't afford to lose our fleet here, which is almost certain to happen. We believe that the Alexander Corporation are using this to their advantage, perhaps even coordinating with the Orc war boss in order to take Damasus, and when it has been destroyed, to reap the rewards for themselves. Have you learned well, of anything that may help us in this cause? Well, I mean, <clears throat> we've uncovered various uh, bits of information. People paying certain people to do certain things at certain times that seem rather questionable, I would say. Uh, to, but it supports what you're telling us now. So why not right. just have someone go and recover this, this gamma pendant and get it off this world? Pendant itself is protected by forces which are highly destructive. While in place on Damasus, it is safe. It stains the planet and is its core. If moved, unless done so by the god emperor's own priests, I... We have no idea what could happen. The Imperium have been happy to leave it in, under the care of the governor and his family while our forces still remained upon the planet, but now we face a tough decision. Uh, I, I want to review some of the things I discovered in the computer. Okay. Such as um, <clears throat> what was the timing of uh, the orcs coming at the mm. mining and uh, the money being transferred? Yeah, almost simultaneous. It's it's it definitely correlates with this theory. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I was more thinking if it happened so fast that they must have known the orcs were already on their way, and then can make preparation, or if it was the orcs sighted and then they paid. It it's yeah it's um it's early enough. Um, that you could reasonably suspect that they knew something was happening, but it's not solid evidence. Yeah, yeah. To say that they, yeah, <clears throat> that they definitely knew, right? Yeah, but like Lady yeah. Orlean said, it yeah. takes a lot of planning to uh, evacuate millions of people, and uh, if you're just hap if an orc invasion just happens, you're not going to save those people. Yeah, especially not if you uh, need to pay that amount. I mean, then you uh, cut your losses and uh, bring in some other people from the family, I would suppose they would do. It's certain at this point that we believe the Alexanders are behind this. Now, <clears> their <throat> man on planet, I believe you've already met him, uh, Joran. <laughs> Seems like yeah. the weak kind of sort. He may not know exactly what's going on, but he certainly knows who does. Yeah, and he's probably some sort of a... Uh, what can I uh, explain? Uh, some sort of a potential backup plan? If the governor would have died, he would get power and then they could have gone down. Because then Joran would be the governor. Yeah. Mm. And if the governor in himself is trying to uh, uh, looking at other avenues of inheritors, then they might have grown uh, impatient. She nods. I'm I think it's best that we have a conversation with our friends. Don't you? Yeah. Well, I think that he would be a, a pretty easy nut to crack. Yeah. 
I Perhaps mean, we can. Give us a... We're good. Well, uh, we could probably, you know, uh, get in somewhere friendly. Uh, Perhaps on him. a yacht. Yeah. Throw him in a closet, and you know. Yes. Do some yes. Work. It's a good idea. I hear that there's a cruiser going around, some kind of yacht that one, uh, let's see here, ah uh, yes, Michael Arendt runs, uh, yeah. almost certainly Joran Alexander will be upon it, perhaps then would be a good time to uh, capture him. You know, it would be, wouldn't it? i tell you what, uh, Lord Commander, um, Lord Captain, I'd be willing, yes. us crew would be willing to help you out here because, like you said, this is an important artifact of the Empire. And I know that uh, my record is a little uh, stained, but um, I hope that us doing this would show you the kind of man and the kind of people that we are. I mean, we're all humans here, after all. We are indeed. indeed. I have our medical reports. <laughs> Nobody's asking you to prove it, Trinity. Um, <laughs> but she's like, uh, she, you know, she nods and is like, "Yes, this information has been shared with you under the knowledge that if you do not obey, you will be executed before your uh, after your arrest." But perhaps <clears throat> you know, if we do help you out here, we could all clear the air of any kind of past. Mist, misgivings that you might have. How can you Perhaps arrest so. us if you are leaving? Does this mean you will stay? Uh, she she uh, <laughs> shakes her head and says, the Imperial Navy is everywhere. Good luck at running us. We do to such a run. Oh, no, it'll no, only no. be a matter of time. No plan on running. We have no plans yeah. on running. We have people yeah. to save. Well, I, I, I was I was gonna say we're not stupid, but then again, uh, saving people kind of lost me there. So uh, uh, I have tests to prove right. our intelligence. Also, bear with me one moment, and I shall pull them up. Uh, we are also yeah. willing to let slip the payment <laughs> that the governor is sending your way. Well, I mean, we're just we're just you know part of a rogue trader group. I mean. We have to get paid in order to keep the ship flying. You understand that. We don't have the the coffers of the Imperium to fill our fuel tanks. Yeah, I mean, you, you have seen our ship, right? How better to assist the Imperium in its business than to improve our own ships and our capabilities? We'll see about that, won't we? Now, you do your job. And you find this Joran Alexander, find what he knows, so that I can have a reason to stay on this planet with my navy and we might stand a chance against this orc invasion. You know, Lord Captain, you're, uh, you're absolutely right. Hang on. I'm gonna, like, bleep up, uh, old, uh, Mr. Arendt there on the, uh, on, on the Vox channel. Hey, and, how's uh, it going? Hey, Mikey. How are you doing, my naughty little doctor? <laughs> oh. Uh, oh well, well, I mean, <laughs> I... Yeah, it's me. Um, but I was calling because... Let me tell you something, man. And I'll do a deception roll if you want me to. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> Since we left, she has not shut up about you. So I don't think we're going to be able to get anything done this evening. Until we go on this this cruise or whatever that you you filled her head her head's in the clouds. That's all I can say. Um, <laughs> ah, I understand. Honestly, I do. This is <laughs> should have just, no. just left it to the role playing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, uh, there are very many fine ladies aboard this ship right now. There are currently four of them next to me. And, you know, I did think she was a little bit blue. The whole doctor thing, mm, not sure if it's really me. I've got a couple of teachers here, and it's, uh, 
really working for me. So, um, you know what? Uh, if you drop by, then you drop by. But I'm pretty busy um, right now. Kind of uh, got well, my hands full, if you know what I mean. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, that's a good problem to have. But yeah, I was just going to let you know, we're going to come by. But I, I wanted to give you a heads up. So, you know, maybe you can help her not right, be blue dude. anymore. It's been saying. great, but, you know, real busy over here. So, uh, see you if I see you. All right. Yeah, exactly. Let's look forward to our experimentation. Uh, maybe you should, maybe you should find out when we get there. Let's, let's, I think we should head back over there <laughs> before they take Go off. <laughs> For the God Emperor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, you really need to work on your intonation. <laughs> For the God Emperor. For the God Emperor. For the God That's... Emperor. You're getting better. Um... For the God Emperor. <laughs> getting there. It's getting there. Sounds human enough almost, for me. Almost human. <laughs> <clears throat> so you guys roll up to um, uh, the, the the cruiser, which at this point is, you know, just taking off. Uh, it's basically uh, like a the people drinking, you know, dancing aboard this cruise is the most luxury, luxurious thing you've ever seen. Uh, people are like serving food and drinks, and everyone's not wearing enough clothes, that kind of thing. Uh, and uh, you spot Michael, and he's uh, with a like a, a group of women right now who are just laughing at everything he says uh, as he's uh, drinking from a long champagne flute. <laughs> and that's when I said to her, honestly, I'm not sure that you're a real doctor. <laughs> and his kind of face changes for a moment as he sees the group of you. Oh, you're all here. Fancy seeing uh you. Yeah, I mean, we're just uh, taking you up on the offer there, uh, Mike. Um, Please, MJ. So, uh, yeah, yeah, MJ. Um, Definitely doesn't so, have a J in his name. <laughs> I'm like wondering where the J came from. <laughs> one out of the I was like, wait, is this his name Michael Joran? Did Michael I miss him? Aaron, yeah. <laughs> Michael J. Aaron. Um, Michael J. Aaron, yeah. <laughs> So, so Mikey, uh, this, this, you, you got it. You, you, you put on an amazing party. I'll just say that. I'll just say that. Every, all the movers and shakers here, right? Oh yeah, uh, pretty much everyone who's anyone is here. Uh, in fact, as you look around, you can see Joran uh, is like anxiously uh, drinking from a flute whilst one of his like data sheets is uh, he's like tapping away on it, doing the governor's bidding, uh, and you can like you hear, overhear a brief conversation he's having. I was like, yes, Governor, of course, first, straight away, straight away. And he hangs up and uh, goes back to swigging away at his flute. And Michael says, so, uh, yeah, it's kind of a big deal here. <laughs> it, it's, it seems that way. Uh, Trinity, you want to you wanna, you wanna keep our host company? Very much. I wish to be inspected for my cleanliness. I believe I am now appropriate. <laughs> oh, I bet you do. <laughs> She, and I'll just lean in, lean in real close, be like, MJ, come here, come here, J MJ. Yeah. Hmm. She was talking about experimentation earlier. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and just slowly right. back away. <laughs> well, hand me a test tube and call me a tech priest. <laughs> I reach into my bag and I find it. <laughs> Make sure it's the biggest test tube you can find. <laughs> and I'm gonna start making my way over to uh, over to Jordan. It's so what recess, to what recess of my brain does this thing come from? <laughs> there's that <laughs> Trinity. No matter what anybody tells you, there's nothing wrong with a standard size test tube. It is not the size of the test tube. It is how you fill it. Correct. So you must that. precisely measure any liquids or quantities that you place in the tube. Right, well, I mean, sometimes I there's going to be spillage, uh, but, you know, as long as you clean up, it's fine. It's going to be okay. You must have I precise... I love it how, how happy is not the least human in the group here. 
Uh, you're only like 28% human, but you're the most. <laughs> you're not the least. <laughs> All right, then. And uh, Michael, like, gets Trinity on the one arm, and uh, presumably the rest of you guys uh, detach yourself from this uh, <laughs> situation. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to show you my gamma pendant. So, uh, the group of you uh, see Joran, um, who's uh, nervous, he got a swigging away, he looks, oh, you guys are here! Oh, great, I'm glad, so, so glad you could make it. Oh, yeah, most most definitely, and uh, as, like, I'm sure, like, a servitor's floating by, and he'll grab champagne right. and and be like, a, a toast! This is this is a good time, yeah. and just and uh, go, to, go to swig it, and just kind of, like, drink a little bit, um, and uh, as soon as he doesn't look or anything, can I do like a sleight of hand to like not drink the champagne? Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> my ba- my basic plan here Boo! is I want to try to get him trashed. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, he seems like someone of a low constitution. Uh, so you mm-hmm. like sling it over your shoulder off into the void of space, <laughs> and uh, he. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you do a sideways like drink, uh, <laughs> and uh, like yeah, I'll just around here and like sling it out. <laughs> yeah, he's, oh, it's good. It's good to see you all. Sorry, I'm just so busy. There's so much to do. <laughs> it's nice here though. Let's see that your friend has met Michael. Yeah, she said something about uh, examining him or something. I don't know. You know how, you know how oh. those human doctors are. Oh, no, but I imagine all the time I think about it a lot. Uh, but um, you, you never met the doctor? What? You know, she could. I could arrange for uh, you to have an appointment with her. That's oh. something that would be your preference. <laughs> Start sweating, Lowe's. I mean, I, looks like Michael's, you know, <laughs> well, that's not a. <clears throat> hey, hey, Control. hey, hey, uh, Jordan, let's, get, let's get, get another <laughs> drink. You don't even want to know what she can do with that stopper. Just get you another drink. You seem <laughs> a little flustered. Bunsen Burner. Get, yeah, get him another drink. <laughs> she has a flange that you would not believe. Oh. Wow. <clears throat> Whew. Yeah. Well, maybe that's. <clears throat> yeah. But, you know, I'm just so busy. I've got all this, you know, work to do. But, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe another time, you know, it wasn't an invasion. <laughs> you know what? Uh, yeah. I'll date when I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Could be tomorrow, he's right? Fu- he's fucking Gabe from the office. <laughs> 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 Okay, <laughs> got it now. <laughs> yep, yep, they just clicked with me. So, All right. But what about you? I mean, like, I mean, it seems like you know you you're in for a shot there, you know. Y- yeah, yeah. I mean, we've we've been all around today. It's uh, it's been it's been quite nuts seeing uh, yeah. all the goings on, all the machinations here, right? Your family. <laughs> you didn't. You you kind of undersold them a little bit. <laughs> oh, I, you know, I do my best. I, I don't really handle any of the business. That's all my dad. Oh, yeah. So dad is the head honcho of the family? Yeah, yeah. He, he runs all the business. He just, he tells me what to do. He sends me all these, you know, encrypted files and stuff. And <laughs> I don't really understand any of it. You know, like, do this, go here, send these people off world over there, send this message, you know, move around these things. I... <laughs> I don't really know much about it, but you know, my father, uh, you know, Lord uh, Alexander, he's uh, he, he handles it all. S- sounds like uh... <clears throat> he's like, uh, when are you gonna get that gamma pendant, Jorn? I'm like, what even is a gamma pendant? You know? <laughs> yeah, like, right? a gamma pendant. It's like, is this thing even real? Right? <laughs> Right? Like, they're just going to leave the fucking Emperor's armor laying around on a planet like this, right? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> you know, it's all just gobbledygook to me. <laughs> right, right. 
so, the, go so the governor's all, we mustn't let anyone go near that Gavapendon Joran, you know? And I'm like, sure, what's, what's even going on? And then she's over there with the test tubes, and, uh, <laughs> hey, you know, I, I, I felt you know like I've had some wine. You know? Yeah. I feel like uh, I've had a wine or two. Well, let's have another, and I'll just motion for another champagne. Over, we'll have a toast. Oh, yeah. Be like, listen, tell you what, I'm gonna. He's had like gonna, two hang on. Wine. He's had like two white wines, and he's fucked, right? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm no, gonna that's bleep my over. Kind of date. I'm gonna bleep over to uh, Trinity. <laughs> yeah. Trinity up on the Vox and be like, hey, you need to. Uh, can you? Do, can you look yeah. up on your database? on how to seduce a human male. One moment, Michael. <laughs> right, look up on that data pad. I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> he looks what over towards Cal, like, like, like that was the perfect setup. He gives you like... <laughs> Once you get them on the data pad. It states here to seduce the well, human male. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I don't need you to read it out loud. I, I, I'm a male. I know what it takes to seduce me. Um, but then why did you question? Need, no, no. I need you to. Uh, you see this kid over here? He's uh, he's rather smitten with you. How delightful. And we need you to distract him. I can do that. You just need to get his 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 personal data pad away from him, so that Ilk can hack it. Can you do that? Yes. Goodbye, Michael. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> and then, as 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 Trinity yeah, comes over, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop Michael and be like, "Listen, this is what she does. This is how she plays hard to get." She's, and I'm just gonna basically try to run interference. So, uh, she's, as she walks away, you see the sway of her head like slightly her. increase as certain parts of her body become slightly rounder in form, and certain things seem to slightly adjust. <laughs> and as, as I pass Trinity, I'll be like. <laughs> As I pass Trinity, I'll be like, did you have some work done? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, you, you head over to Joran. And he's kind of sweats and like downs the last, you know, champagne flu that he's got. Hey! Good evening, Joran. Oh. Isn't it nice to be on this yacht? Super nice. Don't the stars Super make it nice. very romantic? Uh, I, I guess. Why don't you shed a few of your applications and the items so that we can become closer? Uh, what, 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 shed? What, what do you mean? She like reaches across into his pocket and like seductively pulls out the data pad and just slides it away. We don't need data between us. I have all the statistics oh. you need. <laughs> wow. Um. Can I make a persuasion? What? <laughs> Please. <laughs> <clears throat> Eleven. Yeah. Um. He's like, um, I I don't feel equipped for this. In oh, I anyway. show you. Your anatomy and physiology are perfect for everything that I have planned. Can Can I try to uh fill up his a uh, glass of wine? Uh, without him noticing it, so they can just sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. He just kind of okay. What, 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 what do you? What's the plan? I thought we could get to know each other. 
away from all there's... of this noise, perhaps. Okay, sure. There's 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 rooms down there. We could we could talk. I like to talk. Let's talk <laughs> in the rooms. You're like down there. Well, okay. He looks towards Kel. Human like... to human, <laughs> man to woman. Under the stars. <sighs> and she like grabs her pad and she's like. <laughs> next page, next page. Um, as you guys head down to have that conversation, that's one we're going to have to have next week, my friends. Because <laughs> that's where we're going to end tonight's session of Dark Matter. Holy shit, I just looked at the time. I got completely caught away in that game. Uh, so, oh man, I'm. Whew. Holy shit, that was funny. Um, if you guys enjoyed the show, please do let us know. We'll be back next week for the second and final part of the show. Same time, uh, 8 p.m. Oh, 7 30 p.m. Eastern uh, next week for uh, for this show. So we'll see you guys then. Definitely go ahead and check out the Dark Matter Kickstarter if you haven't given it a chance yet. If this game didn't convince you, I don't know what's gonna. Uh, so check out the uh, sci-fi conversion for, uh, for D&D and back it on Kickstarter. Um, but let's go around to cast and crew real quick. Did we enjoy ourselves? And of course, where can we find you guys online? Uh, Pruitt, great job tonight. How was that? Oh, uh, I, I, any chance, any chance to play with uh, everyone here on Counter Role Play? It's it's always an honor and a pleasure. I had so much fun tonight uh, with with my cast and crew of humans, <laughs> all humans. <laughs> Yes, we are you. By the way, did, I was stepped away for a bio break. Did I literally hear you say we don't need this data between us? I have all the statistics you need. <laughs> and that's the line of the night. I'm sorry. I was I, I literally almost pissed all over my bathroom. Like when I heard that. TMI. Apologize for that. Because I am Pruitt from WebDM. Um, we have uh, videos on Wednesday. Actually, our video on Illusions just came out today. Uh, we got games on Tuesday, Thursday. If you saw something funny you like here, send it over to Power Score RPG. Sean, he gathers all the clips for RPGN that comes out on Sunday at 1 p.m. Central, uh, where we go through all the funny stuff in RPG ta or tabletop RPGs and make dick jokes, pretty much. So... Uh, I'm pretty sure you can find something in this show uh, that could make it on there. Just saying. Uh, but anyway, I can't wait till next week um, yeah, where we can finish this out and see if we can't snuff out some uh, heresy. Amazing. Uh, Bastian, same questions. Yeah, it was really fun. Um, in the social situations, uh, I don't mind taking a back seat. It's... Uh... It depends a bit on, on, on the character I make, uh, how often that happens to me. But uh, yeah, it was really a love to enjoy, uh, to see. And as I said, uh, I'm happy I'm uh, not the least human in the group. Um, <laughs> even if you I'm keep like, saying I'm that. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all definitely uh, human. Like, um, and, uh, yeah, as, as you know, I'm, a, I'm an engineer, sound uh, broadcasting. Uh, that's why I don't have a voice. I have a voice emulator. So um, you can find me on Encounter Roleplay in the background, putting stuff together. There we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's where we stop. Uh, <laughs> the most human. Uh, amazing Nicholas. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this was really fun. Uh, uh, even though I do know, not know uh, almost anything about uh, Warhammer, so. But yeah, uh, this was possibly one of the most fun streams I've had here so far. And uh, then that of the Dragonborn was really amazingly silly at times, anyway, so. But yeah, uh, you can find me at the Nevinta uh, at Twitter and uh, bi-weekly on Twitch, where I run a psychedelic space musical campaign. Awesome. Awesome. And <laughs> Charlie. Yes, darling. I had the best time. <laughs> I, I love space. I, I want to stay here. I have so many cool things on my character sheet that I can't wait to expose you all to. Um, oh, no, next uh, week. This was so much fun. <laughs> uh, thank you so much to May Champress for hooking up with Will to get this going. Thanks to Will for running this and 
of course, cast for being amazing. I am really looking forward to seeing Happy bop someone. I am so looking forward to that moment. I can I can tell that power is just amping up in that fist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing. Well, my friends, definitely go and check out Dark Matter. Thank you again to uh, Major Jam Press for uh, letting us run this game. We'll be back next week for the second part of it. Best of luck to those guys in the Kickstarter. It's already kicking ass, so it's going to be even better. I'm going to go and increase my pledge in a few seconds here. And uh, until <laughs> next time, my friends, try not to throw too many that ones because we want to be here laughing when you do. Good night, everyone. Oh, and it's like the end of Good. season two uh, on a Roll Play. So see you guys next. Do we do everyone? Do we do Nicholas? Do we do Pro? Yeah. Do we do Charlie? Yeah. yeah. And I, I've got a back oh. mic. It works. Yeah. So. Oh, you got a back. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. Bastion, where can we find you? And that's it. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yeah. uh, no. All right, good. Bastion's here, and now it's time to go. Uh, now that Bastion's back. But thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. Uh, no, not even next week. Uh, next week's schedule is, like, super fucky, because uh, we're off for two weeks. I'm off on holiday. We'll see it. No, we're, we're doing uh, this. Next season begins... Yeah, we're doing this. But, yeah, but yeah. most of the shows are off because they finish. But we're doing it next week. Yeah, eighty-four hour stream is happening. Forty-eight hour stream is happening. Eighty-four hours. Oh my god! I'm on the late. We'll see you guys. Peace out. Bye. Bye. Bye.